Can everyone like to bring the meeting to order? I'd like to ask the roll call, please. Blue. Here. Bozeman. Here. Isherum. Here. Holthauser. Here. Parr. Here. Reed. Here. Sowen. Here. Okay, so I'd like to ask that we all please stand for the prayer. like to address the board regarding the FY16 amended budget. No one? Okay. Seeing no one, I ask for a motion to close the public hearing and note that no one addressed the board. I move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Cheryl. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Bozeman. Aye. Aye. Both Aye. Park. Aye. Reed. Aye. Sowen. Aye. Blue. Aye. All right, thank you. We'll now move into the public participation portion of the meeting, and Dr. Parker will begin with the superintendent's report. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our June meeting. It's hard to believe we've been out of school almost a month, so had an early start to the summer this year. We're going to start with our safety minute. Uh, I just need to make sure that we have volunteers willing to call 911. First aid responders and anyone who is certified in CPR. If you could raise your hand, thank you very much. Our exits are off to our left and to our right and our AD machine is in our main hallway to the right if needed. I didn't do the typical enrollment graph tonight because it's June and, and our enrollment fluctuates uh, quite a bit during the months of June and July, but I'll just uh, let the board and everyone know that our uh, enrollment tends looks to be uh, very steady uh, based on just the enrollment packets that were returned. I don't anticipate a drop in our enrollment. Um, I would anticipate it would either be the same or will be growing so based on um, just the, the current students that have enrolled. So a lot will be determined in the next six weeks. I wanted to give a brief update on some of our summer projects and especially since Mr. Graham's here with us tonight. We're working on replacing our bleachers out at the high school. If you pull up, the, the bleachers have been removed and that project is, uh, will be finished from what I believe ahead of schedule. Is that still accurate? Good. All right. If the weather continues to cooperate, um, we we'll also have a very large roofing project going on here at the high school to take care of some of the uh, rain issues that we've had and the water getting in the building and that project also continues to go very well with our warm weather. Um, the modular classrooms that we had donated to the district are set to arrive, I believe, one set arrived today, I hope. Yes. And um, that work will also be completed in time for us to use those rooms for students in August. And it looks like we're definitely going to need those at the middle school. So 
We have several drainage pro projects going on throughout the district, and um, I would say that's the bulk of what's going on uh, from a building perspective. Otherwise, um, other than getting our, just our general rooms ready. We're continuing to work on our strategic plan that the board approved. We have our instructional leadership teams and our department leadership teams. They're all meeting this summer, continue working on their own plans on a page, and those will be presented to the board uh, here in September or October. Um, next month, we will have a focus on athletics, as Mr. Kreider and his team will present a yearly review of the athletic programs, as well as provide us some updates on our newly formed athletic leadership team. So we're looking forward to that. I know that team's met several times and looking forward to their report. We have some special guests with us tonight, some students, which um, we're always happy when we have students that get to come to the board meeting because that's what we're all about and our decisions are always based on what's best for the students. And so, Mr. Welsh, I will turn that over to you on an exciting opportunity that our kids had. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, introduce this evening five outstanding Dunlop High School sophomores. As, as many of you know, each year, Dunlop High School sends sophomores to the Hobie Leadership Program. Hobie is an acronym that stands for Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership. Uh, Hugh O'Brien was he's a former actor. He started the program back in 1958. The mission of his organization is to inspire and develop our local community youth and volunteers to a life dedicated to leadership, service, innovation, with defined core values of volunteerism, integrity, excellence, diversity, and community partnership. You may remember last year I introduced Ronald Ackman. Ronald was a Hobie attendee as well. He was specially recognized as a regional ambassador for Hobie in Chicago. Um, just an update on, on Ronald. Ronald, uh, currently a senior, uh, after being chosen as an ambassador from our region, went on last year. Uh, he is a member of our student council and he was a member of our very own strategic plan initiative skills uh, to, for all our benefit throughout the community. Um, this year, it's my pleasure to introduce five Dunlop High School sophomores who attended the Leadership Conference. Uh, sisters, Julia and Bruna Tavares, who are Renata's daughters. We also have another group of sisters, Aya and Huda Aldada, and they will speak briefly tonight. Their father is in attendance as well. Uh, Monsier Aldada is here. Uh, and also our fifth member is Franny Bergville. Each of them will speak briefly about their experience this year. Hi everyone, I'm Julia. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I feel like it's really hard to put into words how much I changed, how much I learned in just four days. Um, starting off, I feel like they started off in all the balls thrown down. Everything I thought I knew about leadership, about myself, after that, we got into groups and you just build friendships and bonds that I know will last a lifetime. I know everyone there is 
best parts of this program is we do it in sophomore year. We're going to have these young legs for the next two years. They're going to have a big impact here at Dunlop High School on our community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have a new member of our administrative team, and I would ask uh, Mr. Jefferson to come forward and introduce his new assistant. Well, I don't know how we can top that, uh, <laughs> but um, it is my pleasure to introduce Marcus Bielin. Uh, Marcus has spent the last six years at Quest Academy in Peoria as both a teacher and an, an administrator. He will be splitting his time next year between Hickory Grove and Ridgefield, so we're very excited to have him on board. Welcome to Marcus. We're happy to have you. And that concludes the superintendent's report for today. All right. Thank you, Dr. Parker. Okay, we're now going to um, have public participation. So I think we already have a few people signed in. Mm -hmm. So we are definitely going to have some people that want to address the board this evening. So if you want to please stand if you have not signed in already. And please give your name to Renata and sign in. And then I'm just going to read a couple comments for everyone that's going to be addressing the board. Before addressing the board, I would like to remind you of our process. Per board policy 2230, we ask that when addressing the board, please identify yourself and be brief. Comments shall be limited to five minutes. The speaker is asked to con please conduct oneself in respect and civility towards others. Individuals less than 18 years of age are permitted to address the board if accompanied by his or her parent or guardian. The board typically does not engage in two-way conversations during the public portion of the meeting. Any follow-up response will be addressed by the administration at a later date. To re be respectful of others and to protect confidentiality, complaints against individuals, staff members, or board members, either named or unnamed, should not be orally presented to the Board of Education. Such complaints should be put in writing, signed by the person or persons making the charges, and delivered to the Board of Education Secretary. At this time, I would like to ask anyone who has not signed in, please do so, and then you each may start going to the podium. And please speak into the microphone and state your name when you're addressing the board. Maybe Thank Renata you. can just call them off. I'm yeah. going. So,
we have today um, had kind of a smaller amount of people who wanted to uh, speak to support the bill. In my time at Wild and Wake, I've been there for four different um, custodial uh, key staff people. Um, back to Norm, who's probably the coordinator of the group here, who's uh, with us, and Larry and Josh, and, and then of course Rod. Um, I was on the interview committee with uh, for Rod, and we had seen him as a substitute custodian in the building, and had just been so impressed with what we saw. And uh, when we interviewed him as a team, we just all agreed that um, we still saw the same qualities in him, and, um, and it was unanimous that we wanted to hire him. And I remember about a week after that, I said to him, which probably wasn't my place, but I said, I think I pointed my finger, don't let us down. Give, give, give to us what you told us you were in there. And he said, I, I absolutely will. And um, I just can't tell you the change in our school with him there. Um, prior to to that, we had a number of years of uh, pretty high level of dysfunction in the maintenance staff. It really had an effect on morale in our building many, many times. Um, a number of things, um, you know, that I won't go into now, but with Rod's addition to our staff, it is amazing the change in morale. Now he's been there for however long. He still, I mean, literally almost pinch himself sometimes and say, do you remember what it used to be like and how lucky we are now? If Rod asks you, um, if uh, you need something done, it gets done immediately. So what he does for the building is great, but more importantly, what he does for the kids. I've never seen a custodial person who is so connected with the kids. My classroom is right above where the kids get dropped off by carpools in the morning. And Rod knows each kid individually and speaks to them, and you hear him saying, the parades look adorable, and oh, Cubs, uh, did, did your team win last night? And he speaks to every kid individually and starts their day out um, on such a positive note. So. I just wanted to speak to support of what a critical role I think he plays for, for our school and how appreciative we are to have the level of quality that he gives us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Olivia. I'm Phyllis Brecklin. I teach second grade at Wild Joy, and um, I'm a little anxious being up here around these big tall people because uh, you give me a room full of 25 second graders and I am awesome. <laughs> <laughs> City. <laughs> that doesn't really help me, but thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but secretaries and custodians are two of the most important uh, positions that are in the school. They know everything's going on. Flo Olmstead and Rod Frenchman are no exception. They anticipate the need, they take care of it before it's a problem, they help provide an atmosphere of professionalism and trust within our building, and we love them. Rod Frenchman, when you hire Rod, you were looking to fill an open position. Although that is true, I don't believe you understand the impact that Rod has made at our school. He took this job in a deficit year, knowing he would be earning significantly less than other custodians in the district. He took this job with the understanding that this pay would increase to be commensurate with the other custodians, which would be the best thing to do because that would be life changing for him. However, please take this into great consideration that the job and relationships that Rod has cultivated. Kids love him. He's a role model for these kids. Some of these kids don't have any males in their life. He takes an interest in them. He knows them each by name, every kid. When he meets them at the car, when it's raining, he has the umbrella. It's like they're a personal valet. You don't have, you don't, you just don't even know what he does. For our PTO, he brought in his own grill on his own time and cooked a dinner for the PTO, and then the teachers all brought in side dishes. But this is what Rod did. All these other things, he came in at Christmas time when he was off. We had a trouble with our heater. He came and worked for no pay. He didn't expect it. Also, another thing he did, um, we have these two beautiful planters that are in front of our school. He said, wow, they're great, they're beautiful. Once again, a holiday time, Rod took his own time, his own money. He went to Chilla Falcon to the nursery, brought back the most beautiful greenery with bows and everything, and he put it there. This is not somebody who's working for a job. This is a gift of love that he's given to us. What he does for the teachers is above and beyond. He takes care of things before we barely have a moment to say it out of our mouths. He does it with a smile on his face, and what else can I need to do? All the time. With the parents, they adore him. He is professional, but he is friendly. He knows them all. He knows them by their name. They know him. And for the children, that bond is like. For our big fundraiser in our school, 
our Spook Spectacular, we had a big fundraiser. One of our most popular silent auction items was we gave away Mr. Butcher. We gave this little kid. Are you can't even know the fight for those kids and their parents. We always thought, go, okay, it wasn't the kids, it was their parents, because they were the ones with cash. Going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I mean, this was huge. And some of the kids who would have some issues in the classroom could just need that little push. Their reward is Rod Brickman. They can read to him, they can walk with him, they can push a room with him. He gives them a little tool belt, he gives them a little hat, he takes care of my little boy in my class who got a really bad haircut, really bad. He didn't want to come to school. And um, Rod, when he bought him a hat, brought it to school. And we don't allow hats, we make exceptions. This kid didn't want to come to school. And Rod's his best friend. So, I mean, I'm just talking, he's making a difference. So when you look at secretaries and custodians, they typically are being released. I know we're not supposed to talk about money, but I'm telling you what, we have two of the best at Wild Spring. We've gone through a lot of change, gone through a lot of change. I understand that um, people think survival of the fittest is for the strong speed. It's not. It's for those who can best catch change and make it work. We've done that above and beyond. This man right here has helped me in that part of that. He's our family. I'm sorry, but when you're family, you stick up for each other. Once a wild cat, always a wild cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
knowing there's a lot of consideration in this county right now for one-to-one -one device implementation going. I honestly had this jolt of, uh, I don't know, it's, it was one of those church moments, like conviction, like coming to Jesus kind of things, where I realized I, I have got to get out in front of this. So uh, superintendents come together for a meeting with the regional office, and we call it Curriculum Steering Committee. And I kind of threw it out to them. I said, you guys, my God, I just went to this conference. What's going on out there? Tell me more. We have Princeville, who's had one-to-one -one device implementation for quite a few years now. Quite a few of the limestone feeders are going to one-to-one -one device implementation. And so I said, you know what? Darn it. I'm going to issue a challenge. So that's partially why I'm here, too, is to cheerlead you and support you, whether you do one-to-one -one device implementation or not, is to embrace that technology, not for technology's sake but because it transforms teaching and learning when it's done the right way. We should be having conversations with our teachers about how to use it and how to not just have it be a new kind of chalkboard up front or a new way for kids to read something on a flat screen. It's about project-based work. It's about talking to one another. It's about doing things in the, our businesses keep coming to me saying, we need team builders, we need kids that can work in a project-based fashion. So I issued this challenge, and I'll conclude with this. Um, we're going to be hosting a Google Palooza on the Friday before Labor Day for the Peoria County Schools. Um, right now, it's mostly uh, Peoria Public who've done that because you have a lot of your own robust professional development. This is for a lot of the other districts that need to cooperate together on this. We have Google coming in, National Google. We have CDW, which you, you know, probably I'm sure most of you know who they are. Charles are sponsoring for it for us, paying for the whole thing. And we're modeling it after. Chicago Public has done it for two years now, where teachers just come and for two days, they are just inundated with the Google Apps for Education and how it can transform teaching and learning. So some of your teachers, um, I've paid for their subs to come. I mean, you've got some real uh, people out front with this that could maybe come present. And if you have a few that just wanna come see what we're doing, but I would issue that challenge. We have 21st century learners that we have no idea what kind of jobs we're preparing them for, none. And I would just encourage you to think about that when you are looking at your technology plan as a whole, when you're thinking about your one-to-one -one device implementation. I'm sorry, my voice was really shaky, but as you can tell, this is something I am very passionate about and I'm considering doing my doctoral thesis on it. I am so just moved by the way that I see kids can take technology and transform the way we interact and we learn from each other. So just thank you for giving me the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Shauna? Hi everyone, thank you. I'm Shauna Sedler, a teacher at Dunlap Middle. Um, I'm actually reading a letter from Nicole Lozier. She wanted to be here tonight but could not. She's out of town. Um, so she sent me a letter and asked if I would read it for her. Um, it is also about the one-to-one -one initiative. Unfortunately, I am out of town with my family, but wanted to be able to speak to you in regards to the one-to-one -one initiative. I know many of you were able to hear about all of the amazing things that I was able to witness and experience with my students in a few short months, but for those of you who weren't, I wanted to be able to say a few more things. There were some concerns or questions raised about screen time, as well as research and schools who have implemented this. I've thought a lot about the second semester of my teaching while being part of the pilot program, and they've never once changed my beliefs, philosophies, or best practices as a teacher. What I was teaching never changed. My responsibility is to teach to the standards, our Atlas maps, and our plan on a page. As part of the strategic planning committee, we worked on a mission to grow our kids to their greatest potential. I could go on and on about the opportunities that the devices have opened up for students at all levels. Please, as a parent of a child who was part of the pilot and a teacher in the pilot, let's make decisions in line with our mission, vision, and goals. Let's continue to trust our administration to hire amazing teachers who teach to the standards and implement the best teaching practices around and not worry about test scores or screen time because at the end of the day, teachers at Dunlap do what's best for the kids. Will there be those few and far between situations where a device may not be used to its potential for a child or two? who may not follow a direction or get an app that's not part of the curriculum? Sure, but again, those awesome teachers that are part of this will address it, ask for help, or be given the professional development necessary, just like always. Test scores won't drop because of devices. Test scores could drop based on a group of kiddos missing some standards at a specific level
level or this transition between the level of rigor on ISAP versus PARC. But again, best practices and our mission as a district will guide us through this. We can't be afraid to take leaps because of a score. There are too many variables. Long term, that score will not follow them into lifelong learners, but those devices could provide opportunities for all kids that will follow them into college, the working world, and as lifelong learners. I would also like to end with a quick story. I had a kiddo this year who had a hard time communicating with his classmates, not because of academics or a disability. He never wanted to go to recess, fun days, etc. He wanted to be on a device. If someone had been a fly on the wall, I'm sure I would have been asked all sorts of questions. But that time he was on a device while the other kids were socializing, playing kickball, or whatnot, I was there with him eating my lunch, working, etc., and we were able to build a relationship and discuss things that bothered him. I could help guide him and give him suggestions in an environment that was safe for him. He could hide behind his Chromebook, but if you were that fly, you would have seen guidance, direction, and social support, which you would not have seen in the data. This is just one small story of a kid whose test scores are off the charts, using his device for games, school appropriate of course, but creating an environment for positive dialogue as well. Please consider this initiative and the impact it can have on the whole district, as opposed to the small percentage of worries, risks, and objectives. Thank you for your time, and I'm sorry I was not able to support the committee and teachers who were there tonight. Feel free to call me, contact me, or even speak to a group of my kids from my room. Nicole will be here. And she asked me to give you a copy of this as well.
the other time spent on the Chromebook was not free time. It was typically engaged in reading, writing, or engaged in a task that related to our curriculum. And since often this time on those Chromebooks was reading, in my opinion, reading is reading, whether it's on a physical book or on a device. And that kind of segues into the next concern that a lot of parents maybe had about this was the amount of screen time. As a parent myself, I completely understand this as a serious concern when you're putting a device in front of a child. And I didn't take this lightly when implementing it with my students. In hindsight, I wish we had kept exact data on the amount of minutes that the students had the devices in front of them. But if I were to give it an estimate, in the seven hours that the students are at school within a school day, in my classroom at least, they maybe had their devices open and in front of them anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Not at one chunk of time, but spread out throughout the day. That was typical for my classroom. I can't speak to all the other classrooms, but that's what it looked like there. Much of our day was, it, was as it had always been, full class instruction, group learning, partner work, and hands-on learning. If those activities then segued into a device activity, they would. If they didn't, we didn't hold any devices just for the sake of having them in the classroom. All in all, the one-to-one -one pilot was a positive experience in which I saw many benefits for the students, and any concerns that arose were remedied through thoughtful planning and putting in quality teaching practices. And I just wanted to share with you um, one of my favorite moments of having the devices in the classroom was an unlikely pairing of students that came out with it. I had a little girl in my classroom that was very shy and didn't often come, come out of her shell, and she was a very um, slow achieving student in all subject areas. However, she had a great interest in tornadoes, as it was tornado season this past spring, and she wanted to do a lot more research on these, yet she wasn't quite sure how to get started on these devices. Um, a student that sat next, sat next to her in her group which was not a friend of hers, did not often talk to her. He was an enrichment student, and he knew all about the devices. He could teach me things about these devices. He volunteered to help her, and they ended up coming up with this great presentation that they shared with the rest of the class on their own time, on their own initiative. And that's kind of what I was leaning towards with the enhanced learning opportunities. Those two would not have been able to collaborate like they did without these devices in the classroom. So I just thank you for your time and your consideration, and thank you for taking it. Thank you. Thank you. Whenever you have a couple students who have ADD 
or whatever the reason is, keeping track of multiple things on their desk. What I saw was them being able to keep track of tabs on their screen and easily scroll from tab to tab versus trying to manipulate several things going on. For example, like with Park. And I don't want to talk about high stakes tests too much, but hey, it's education we got to speak about it a little bit. So for example, one of my lessons that I would do would be a, called a paired passage. So you have two passages about tornadoes. One could be fiction, and one could be nonfiction. Plus a graphic organizer. You got two sets of possibly stable passages, plus an organizer on the student's desk. The whole entire thing is filled up. I would try a number of one, two, and three for those students who could keep track of it like I could in third grade, but still they would be confused. What I saw though was I got on ReadWorks, which is a totally free website teachers use all the time. I you know borrowed from other teachers' idea, and instead of three pieces of paper and packets on their desk, there'd be three tabs. And I walked through with them slowly. It's great having a smart board and showing them visually, explicitly, exactly how to do that. And then from there, they took off. So within three months or so, instead of me walking it through, I would gradually give them more release and let them kind of take over and take over ownership. So speaking of reading, um, I think, to be honest, we might have even read more. So another unit that I did a lot in February is I started doing Black History Month last year. So I got on Teachers Pay Teachers, other websites, found a bunch of paper to run off reams and reams and reams of paper. It's all good. But then I got the Chromebooks. There's a whole world out there that I realized. And what I did, speaking of enhanced learning, is I got on the, on the website, and then I would use that as the paper platform. But I would take that to a whole different level because we had the ability to use Chromebooks. So at any typical school, there's a computer lab. You know, it's a physical room, hooked up with computers, really warm with all those boards and all that good stuff. Well, my classroom signed up for Fridays. So there were, and now it's kind of the way it is, I'm sure the teachers could agree with this, sometimes you kind of buy your days until it's your day. Well, that wasn't the case anymore in Chromebooks. So instead of having that enrichment opportunity on Fridays, we could do it any day of the week. So that really opened up doors for teachers the opportunities were endless, um, and it was nice to see me just taking risks. I think teaching is about taking a lot of risks, and if you're not taking risks as a teacher, you're not doing it right. At least that's my mentality towards it. So I would try things out each week. All right, I'm gonna focus on this, I'm gonna focus on that. If it didn't work, all right, kick it to the curb, let's do something different. But throughout this experience, I found several different things that I thought were very, very helpful. And then with our PLCs each week, I would meet, talk with the two third grade uh, teachers that I work with, and we do have a few Chromebook cards in, in school, but we have to share them and things and let them try it. So by the end of the year, um, it, it felt like a pretty well-oiled machine. Um, and I, I was really looking forward to the opportunity to try and improve on that in the future. Um, I hope, but you know, that's, that's ultimately your decision. But uh, I think the piloting team is one that really, really wants to work as a group, not just among the pilot, but amongst everybody else too. So when we got more comfortable with the, with the Chromebooks and the one-to-one, -one, we started to you know, answer questions. We started getting comfortable with it. So in April, we had a SIP a half day where we would just work amongst our building staff. And then we got the opportunity to talk to everybody. Here's what it looks like. And then I think they felt like we did back in December, like, whoa, that's a lot going on right there. But we tried to ease some of, you know, some of their questions, show them the basics, and I would love the opportunity to teach others, other teachers. Because I could just feel it that day. Sure, there was a little confusion going on. That's with anything new that you learn throughout your life. But it was also, we were, be, we were really, really being aware. We could, you could feel in the room that things were changing. And it was a positive change. So I know this is exactly nothing that I wrote down. Um, but I don't want to go on and on. But differentiated instruction was an awesome thing, too. So speaking of packets, instead of me saying, all right, you guys get packet A, you guys get packet B, you get packet C. Within Canvas, which is our online learning component that we got to use uh, throughout our one-to-one -one pilot, I could individually assign passages to certain students. So they couldn't see, student A couldn't see what student B had as their passage. So I'll get on ReadWorks once again. All they would know is they're reading about tornadoes. 
So they wouldn't know necessarily. Sure, some of them would kind of compare and see if the pictures matched up or not. That's just how kids are. But at the end, we would have extension activities. Let's have a discussion. Let's have an essay, you know, pair type of writing activity. They all could contribute to whatever the extension activity was because they all read about the same topic. Sure, it was at the road level, which I think education should be differentiated as much as possible. So instead of a teacher on a Sunday night running off copy after copy, figuring out which ones to tab throughout the week, I could get on there and in less time and without putting a carbon you know, footprint on our environment, I definitely was, it was a lot very much more seamless for me to do it and it was very effective. And I think some of the students see, um, I saw a speaker named Dr. Daggett a few years ago. He came to Peoria actually and spoke at the Civic Center. He said one of the problems in education is that students see school as like a place where the dinosaurs rule, where it's kind of like, oh, that's a school thing. They don't see the they don't see the relevance to their actual life. What I saw with students is I saw students way more engaged. I think they saw it way more relevant what they were learning in school, because sure, outside of school, they're on Chromebooks as well as you or iPads, and some of the stuff they could do manipulating the tabs was was amazing. So I know that you know a couple of other speakers before me and other I've heard other people speaking too about screen time is that we definitely do our best to balance things out. So throughout the pilot, we filled out a Google Sheet. What did you work on today? What subject did you work on? So we filled that out every day, or maybe at the end of the week when we have time on the weekend, fill it out and then reflect and look back. So it was easy to see kind of what we worked on, what I worked on. So I worked on a lot of reading first, and to me, reading was, was it. it. It was awesome. It was way more effective, I think, teaching reading that way than not. There are touchscreen Dell Chromebooks. Have you ever seen one? I rec highly recommend checking them out if you haven't yet. You can zoom in and zoom out. So if a student has a disability with vision, oh, I'll wrap it up. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, I talk too much. Um, but for differentiation, is awesome. And speaking of Google Docs, there's a speech-to-text feature. So a student who literally would go into tears when I said, all right, it's time to start writing. I gave him the headset with the headphone attachment. He would do his own thing. He cranked out two pages the first time he ever had a chance to do that. So to me, that's the story of the one that really sticks out in my mind. Sorry to take up all your time. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Different goals for what I want for my kids here. 
here in a public school, then maybe what they want. And, um, and I don't think that I'm just speaking for myself as a parent. Um, what I want from a public school is I want them to learn building blocks. I want them to learn math. I want them to be proficient at math. The other day, um, I, I was in the car and I was talking on the phone, it was on the speaker, and I had one of my children with me, and uh, I had to do some mathematical calculations in my head. I was prorating, um, I, I was prorating interest in my head. And my child looked at me and said, wow, mom, that's amazing, how did you do that? I'm like, well, you know, I learned that in school, and I'm not saying that they didn't learn. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that they didn't do a good job, but I mean, I just feel like kids today, they aren't learning the building blocks that we learn at my age, and I also notice the teachers are like a lot younger than Kimmy, so that might be a little bit of, um, you know, there might be a little bit of a generational gap here, but I'm very concerned that we're going above and beyond, I think, what I, what I would like to see from a public school. I know that there are some private schools that are doing this, but there aren't, there aren't a lot of public schools. Um, the other thing is, um, I heard somebody speak about, I can't even repeat it, it was just words that are way up here. And if I wanted my child to grow up and be a Caterpillar executive, then I would completely agree that that's you know maybe what they should be doing at this level. But I don't think all kids are going to be on these tracks where they have to learn all of these really advanced ideas and advanced things. I think that we want our kids to um, be able to conceptualize things, to think logically, and that is where I feel like our kids are really falling behind. I don't see our kids, not just my kids, but kids in general, I don't see them thinking logically. And I think it's because of the screen time. And I think there's every parent that knows what I'm talking about when you try to address your kid and they look at you very blankly because they've just been engaged in a screen. And I run into that a lot. And I'm very concerned, I'm very concerned about that. I think we have children that go to Dunlop schools that might not want to, that, that might not want to uh, be prepared for the corporate world. Maybe they're going to go into the trades. Maybe they need to figure out in their heads, you know, if this is a 12 gallon gas tank, then how many ounces of, but I mean, I just feel like we're gonna be getting away from the building blocks of logical thinking, and um, we're just gonna continue the screen days that they're already in. And somebody said, oh, the kids, it's amazing how they can run through the tabs. Oh, it's amazing what my kid can do on a screen. It's like, I'm just, I mean, I don't think the kids today have any problems moving through a screen. I think you can give them any device and they can figure out in a heartbeat, and that's not really what I want my kids learning here at Dunlap. I don't want them learning how to manipulate a screen. I want them learning the building blocks of education. Um, the other thing is somebody said, oh, it's amazing the world that, is, that, that opens up when you have these Chromebooks. It's amazing the world that opens up when you take them to a library, too. I mean, I, I have to drag our kids in the library. But when I do, they're amazed. And I think that that's a very similar thing that they might find on a Chromebook they could also find in a library. Um, let's see. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Gary and I, we have a mutual friend. Her name is Hetty Elliott. And Hetty is the director of the adult education. Uh, but she teaches um, kids and helps them get their GED if they haven't been able to graduate uh, from high school. She uses a pad of paper, a textbook, and some pencils, and some donated laptops. And she takes these kids, and she graduates them after teachers from K through 12 haven't been able to do in the public schools. So I think my point in that regard is that we want great teachers. We don't necessarily want great devices. We want great teachers. We want great teachers uh, teaching building blocks of success. Uh, I, I feel like there are a lot of parents that feel the same way I do. I'm a little disappointed that the teachers, and I could be wrong on this. I could completely be wrong. I don't remember ever getting anything asking for my input 
on this one to one. I know that it was, I know they're getting a lot of teachers input. I don't, and I could be wrong, but I do not think the teachers were pulled on this. Um, and then finally, I think I would just like to say that a lot of us met when we were, when we all became kind of jarred and aware of the budget problems that we had several years ago. And we, I remember there was a gymnasium that was completely filled with people. And we were all just shell-shocked looking at each other. Like, what just happened here? And I remember the anger from the parents. They said, why did you spend all this money? Why, it's, it wasn't necessary. Just give us good teachers and give us our fine arts. And I'm afraid this could be another one of those moments. That in a couple years, if things get bad, if the situation with Caterpillar doesn't resolve, if the problems with the state continue to increase, I'm afraid we could be at the exact same situation that we were several years ago. We could all be looking at each other shell-shocked. We could be looking at the disruption of our fine arts, layoffs of teachers. You know, I just don't feel, I, I don't feel like we're far enough removed from our budget problems that we should be just jumping head in to the next very expensive project. Because if things fall through, which they very well could, and we're locked into this program, then that is going to mean that we're gonna to have to pay for it in other places where we don't wanna pay for it because we're on the hook for this program. And we could have a whole nother moment, just like what we had several years ago. Um, thank you. This will conclude the public participation portion of the meeting. The board will now move into information and discussion items. Uh, board, the school activity reports were available in the packet for your review. Are there any questions regarding the school activity reports? Okay. And information regarding the high school random drug testing report for the month of May is available in the packet for review. Mr. Kreider is with us this evening. If you have any questions, anybody? 
The administration will have a short presentation on the key goals for the district, and that will be leading into the 2016-17 school year. All right, thank you very much. We're going to just do a real quick run through of our um, key things that we're working on at the district level, and so you'll you'll recognize many of these things. Obviously, with our strategic plan being approved by our board um, in April, that drives um, everything that we work on from the district from here on out uh, for the next five years, and so that's how we develop our goals um, at the district level. And these should uh, be very familiar to the board. These are the goals that uh, we set forward with me um, that need to be uh, reported back to you in, in December, January time frame. But, Obviously, student performance remains at the top of our list. Uh, the strategic plan, as I mentioned in my board update, or in the superintendent update, will have um, our instructional leadership teams, our building district level teams. Um, everyone will have plan on the page and uh, balance scorecard items. You'll see starting next month, you'll hear me reporting out on uh, the balance scorecard on different items. We just updated that um, and uploaded it under our website for all the targets that we had to finish for June, and then we'll do that again in November. So, A communication plan, we'll see uh, a uh, plan come out uh, in the next uh, couple months. It's a, it'll be much more formalized, of, uh, including some of the things we're already doing and then how we are looking to enhance communication going forward. Uh, the part of our uh, new contract with the DEA, we have a new position for a media person, and I did um, meet with a teacher and that position's been filled. Um, so you'll see a lot more uh, videos of anything from possibly uh, basketball games, musical performances, uh, podcasts, things like that. So that'll all be part of that formalized communication plan. I hope to have that to the board here in the next month, maybe two months. Obviously efficiencies, as you know, we mentioned within our uh, talks tonight that we heard from people at the at the podium we continue to look for ways to save money and so that you know just becomes or remains just as important as always at risk students this was uh, something that mrs bond and i are working on together uh, it's one of her main focus areas looking for ways to uh, better identify our students who are at risk and what we can do to support those kids uh, district climate survey that's upon uh, for approval tonight upon approval i'll work with the admin team on uh, how we're going to administer that that survey and when and, and all the the details so but the idea would be that the board would have those results back before uh, november or december uh, working at our hiring practices just more uh, formalizing uh, job postings uh, practices as far as interviews making things more consistent within all of our buildings training our staff our admin team um, on different uh, interview skills, and that's something that Mrs. Beverly is, is spearheaded of. And just the larger we get, the more we need to make those practices more diverse and more consistent. And facility plan, I'll have a three to five year uh, facility plan for the board, hopefully uh, at the September board meeting. And we have some ideas of how we plan to address our growth, but we'll wait for our enrollment in August and take a hard look at our projections going forward, but you'll see a lot of different scenarios in that plan, and that's something I've been working with the architects with in the last month, on uh, just different scenarios on a lot of what ifs, what if it drops, what if it stays the same, what if it increases, um, and what the administrative team will recommend, and we'll present that to the board uh, going forward in the fall. That's all I'm doing. That's right. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. And we'll turn over to Karen. Okay, so um, under the plan areas, one of the big things
start and we're looking to go right towards the request and things like that. And if we can, there's a little bit of the conversion we need to do with implementations, just kind of ways to get staff able to do it that will allow us to do those things electronically and have everything stored electronically, save paper, save time, and all of those things. And then um, our goal is to get the school based activity and interest accounts moved into the infant admission software system. Right now, the schools, they um, are in charge of their activity and interest accounts, but they're kept usually in QuickBooks or just in an Excel program that you format into. Um, and we'd like to move it into infant admissions. All the reports would be the same and they would be tracked in a central location. Makes it easier for the auditor and everybody involved. So um, those are areas of where we're at and what we're trying to get accomplished this year. With, with that, the school-based activity accounts, there was some discussion months back about cash payments and trying to move away from cash payments for parents paying for activity. Yeah, things. that's not on here. <laughs> yes, um, and that's actually um, in the consent agenda tonight is um, doing online registration and being able to do online payments. That would be a huge, um, huge savings to the district in staff time as well as paper and direct costs and mailings and things like that. Um, and it'll save parents a ton of cash and they won't have to fill out the form three times. If you have three kids, they can fill it out once and it's not handed over. So that's huge and just, um, but so that's just one more thing that's not on that list of the three we should have read. Karen, you probably were gonna address this maybe later, but can you talk a little bit about the budget process and going forward? The budget process going forward, yes. Um, tonight is the, we're, we've got the amended budget for 15, 16, and then later in the summer, And the budget, I know this is best, but I know you're hurting me. Um, you're good. <laughs> they were here three years ago as part of this whole process that, I mean, really everybody sitting up there was part of, whether on the board or part of the community. And nobody wants to be back to where we were back in 2013. And we've all learned from where we were and the practices I can't tell you that the economy won't drop out of the block. I mean, I can't tell you that that won't happen. What I can tell you is that we are all work that I, as a business person, and the administrators and the board and everyone are working together to make sure that we see it coming and that we're not making decisions that will cause us to have to lay off teachers and provide devices. There is a, there's, I, I think, companies in the last few I don't just want to spend money to spend money and we spend it where we need it and if we get to a point where the EAB drops or the EAB drops or the state cuts funding and things like that, we are at a point with one-to-one 
are we are in a very we are in a very good spot. Obviously, the Kapal Tay funding is. Um, and we want to try to increase our surpluses somewhat if we can on an annual basis. So we're running some and positive been. and keep building that. It's been that. going up your reserves. So. Yes, and it's been going up every year. And so the goal is is to increase the reserves in all of the funds, not just the education fund, but the building fund, the transportation fund, all of those, so that we have that ability to react to whatever we when something happens to us that we don't have control of. And so we're in a really good spot, but I just want everybody to know that's where we're looking at. And even this year, we're going to get balanced on paper, but we're going to have some extra money. We're, we're going to hold money over this year. We will, we will not spend as much money as we budgeted. So there will be about how much reserves will grow. And Karen, I don't know exactly. Um, it's right around 5%, 3 to 5% of the ed fund budget. Um, Which would that be? will roll that we didn't use. Okay. So, and then, honestly, that's the goal to have the budget to where we're between, right. we spend between 90 and 95 percent of the budget. That shows that you got enough there for a cushion to make sure you can do your daily operations if something up to me happens, but that you're not over budgeting and burdening the taxpayers by having. Can we just await and address any one-to-one -one stuff yeah. during the one We are going to have a discussion. Action. That'd be okay? Yeah. Action. Right. In action, we'll have a discussion, and then we'll try to make sure that gets addressed. Yeah. So, Karen, did you have anything else? That's it. That's all I have. All right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. And obviously, uh, Mrs. Bowman had a, a last-minute place she needed to be today, so um, we will wait and present on hers um, in August. The only returns. thing I want to make sure that, and this is not necessarily a focus area in our talks here, but if we, if the state does change and we change the ACT to the SAT, that the valedictorian process will need to be reworked. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are conversion charts that have existed for a while. Can we, can we utilize the process if we come to that? And we, we've uh, discussed that with your high school. Yeah. That'd be great. I just we would bring Friday, it Friday, and it wasn't on our to-do list, so I wanted to make sure. We'll bring that back to the board if that's, yep, absolutely. Yes. All right. And then um, Allie then as well. So a few focus areas I'm working on, um, as Lisa mentioned, are all sort of proposed are identifying and supporting at-risk students. Um, more and more we have students in poverty that are affected um, with trauma, as well as students that are at risk academically and social-emotionally in lots of different ways. So um, I've been reaching out to different school districts find those districts that have processes in place that we may be able to 
was wondering, you mentioned the cost analysis of special <coughs> education programs, so maybe we could bring back in-house. Is there um, some analysis of space? Do we have a, the, the ability? We're going to be working on a three by three That'll be with the facility. Oh, okay. Yep. So sure. Yep. Hand in hand. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. I had a question, too. Um, so the counseling department falls under your yes. So one of the things I was wondering about is I know that our counselors are taxed with a lot, but it seems like uh, so many of our students need the help with college uh, planning, and uh, and that's just such a big area. Is there is there any focus on yes, improving and looking at new resources and? Absolutely. Okay. We're working, as you know, we're looking at a new website design, and just as we all have focus areas that are not on this list, because some of the focus areas that we'll be working with many high school counselors on, um, as far as <coughs> identifying, creating a website. I believe that's a future agenda item as well. Oh, okay. and sometime in the next few months. Spoke about it on Friday when I met with her. Yeah. That she's looking at the counselor department and what she will be doing. Okay. Is that, is that everything? Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing your goal. Um, Mr. Grimm is here and he's going to present some information on the state and condition of our current facilities. We're going through this whole book tonight. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice to take home and read. It's a big <laughs> beach side reading, right? Facilities that that we can cover. Just you know, shoot Karen or Tom or myself an email, and you know, if you're wondering about something that's not in there, we'd be glad to get. We tried to try to put as much thought into it as we could, but um, this is also our first shot at, at putting this together. And um, so, if there's stuff that you come across, please don't hesitate to let us know. It looks very comprehensive. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It is. Very nice. Yeah. So Take a look. He should help with the five-year, the three to five-year yeah. facility. That's why this yeah. came first. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Yes. So will this be at a committee of the whole meeting? Um, I haven't decided how we're going to do. It'll either be, we've got a lot going on next month, and so some will be during committee of the whole, and some will be during regular. So I anticipate this to be during committee of the whole, but we'll figure out once we see what all we have. If I can ask a quick question, what is the most urgent thing that needs to be addressed? I would focus on our energy survey that we've had done. I think if we if we look for some very real savings over the next two to four years, I think we'll find it there. Yes. And of course the pool. Where did yeah, where does the pool fall? <laughs> in that uh, we will pool. discuss the pool at the three to five year facility. Okay. Yep. Okay. There is a pool assessment that you've already seen there. in there. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. in there as well. So well, we will have some information on the pool at that time too. Okay. okay. Can I have one more minute? Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, the district now has a foundation, I think, from which to work from. We have centralized uh, uh, quite a bit of information assess each of the facilities and hopefully map out a strategic uh, direction to preserve, enhance, and increase the value of the district's assets. Uh, and this took the efforts of a lot of people who I would like to thank in front of the board. Uh, uh, I would like to thank Lisa 
Leitner, uh, the Director of Food Services, Pete Peterson, the Director of Transportation, Brad Scoopman, our District Mechanic. Uh, all of the maintenance staff that works for the district, they answered a lot of questions. They asked a lot of good questions uh, to make us think about our facilities and our buildings and, and how, we, uh, how we take care of the assets that we have. A number of contractors also helped participate in this. Uh, Jay Horn Electric, Dylan Plumbing, uh, Intech, uh, and a few others. Uh, and I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Parker and Karen Beverland to, for, for their help for providing direction, thought, asking a lot of questions uh, to help shape this, uh, this document as well. And then finally, I'd like to for putting the, the final look together uh, of this document. And I look forward to your questions over the next month and as we go through uh, all this information uh, in the next meeting. Okay? I think he's finally glad to see us come to his office again. So we, we, <laughs> we had lots of questions going through the process. When I got back from vacation on Monday, he was not that excited to see me. Uh, <laughs> so, we were all excited to see you, Karen. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to move on to our uh, driver's education behind the wheel fee increase waiver. And Mr. Beverly, you have some information to share with that? Um, basically, what that is is just very um, quick, brief information on the fill out the state waiver for driver's ed fees. That if we fill out a waiver, we can increase driver's ed fees that will allow us to include teacher salaries. Yeah, two this, years this ago. Is, this is different. Um, going through this form, and I, the majority of I think the school districts around do it, so we would just need to uh, maybe give an idea of what we should charge, or maybe we're going to discuss that in upcoming months after you talk to the. We will discuss it after I talk to the DA and make sure that we're I will run numbers, see where we're at, with what to charge, and it'll be part of the conversation. And do most schools, <coughs> excuse me, waive the fees for those students who are on free and reduced? Yes, lunch? by law, we, we waive the fees for free and reduced lunch students. There would be, at any point in time, any of our fees, we would never prevent okay. somebody from participating or even continuing the ability to pay. Well, I know there was opposition a couple years ago. Is there concern that parents feel like they've already paid for part of that cost by paying taxes? that goes into our Ed Fund or? The opposition wasn't from the community. 
Okay. I seem to recall it was from, yeah. yeah. And how long does the waiver last? Is it the waiver lasts for five years. Five years. And you can use or not use it? You can use or not use it. You don't okay. have to. It just opens up the ability to basically you can go up to $250. Okay. You still have to have expenses that will equate to $250 kind of number of students. You can't make money off of the fine. <laughs> I think we need to keep in mind too, as we increase fees, we keep adding fees each year. The activity fee, the technology fee is going up and this is going up. I think that's a definite thing we need to discuss as far as what the fees will be for, mm -hmm. for this as well. I've heard from several parents yeah. when we'll receive that. The conversations we had like three years ago when the two, when the deficit was coming, there was that concern. The other concern is um, the, the public who does not have students. Yeah, it's more of it's a fairer way. way. It's like a user fee instead yeah. of a yeah. spreading it out. Yeah. Okay. So good discussion. We're, we're all in agreement, I think, with the waiver, at least getting the information and having access to be able to do it. So thank you for looking into that. Okay. Um, we'll, this will now conclude the information and discussion segment of the meeting, and we're going to move into the consent agenda. And I ask if there are any clarifications or discussion items regarding the consent agenda. You know, I just had one question. I know, um, Lucy answered it, but on the fencing, you know, it's, it's just troubling always to just see one bidder. And uh, is there any way to get bidders from, you know, more bidders? I think you, did you reach out to our the two big companies, yes. I assume, and yes. one did I not return three, it. Right. Okay. I had three big uh, mm -hmm. I had two go beyond local or does it become cost prohibitive for them to travel? For a project of, of that size, which was really minimal, uh -huh. okay. uh, it, would be, uh, it, it would be cost prohibitive to reach out to, say, Bloomington Normal or Springfield or Champaign because they would, they would price themselves out to come up here and work on a project. That, okay. But it's not unrealistic if we had a, a larger project okay. that, that there would be people yeah. from outside. Yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. And so yeah. It's, it's posted out on the Anybody can, see can do it if they yeah. want yes. to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on the consent agenda? Any other questions, clarifications? No. Okay. Seeing none, I'll ask a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented for the June 15, 2016 Board of Education meeting. Second. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Karen. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Fisher? Aye. Roll call, sir. Aye. Park? Aye. Reed? Aye. Sowen? Aye. Lou? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we'll now move into the action item segment of the meeting. And the first thing we have is the bill list and treasurer's report, which were included in the board packet for review. Mrs. Beverly is here to answer any questions you may have. Did you have anything you wanted to add this month? The budget.
got a savings account full of pools, so gradually when we decide to go forward, if we decide, the only And when we built the high school, they took money from the education fund for the, and I, I would not want to take money out of the education fund. Just, that wasn't for the high school, though. That was for um, Hickory Grove, right? That oh, Hickory Grove. Hickory Grove. Athletic yeah. Upgrade. yeah. Okay, just want to make right. sure that, yeah. That was Hickory Grove. And the building fund would be, if we took money, it would be, if we had set it aside as a, oh, you set it aside within the building, the building fund. fund. Okay. Much. Also, we had our district investment report that was in your packet. Were there any questions for Mr. Wynn, who's with us this evening? Or Mr. Wynn, did you have anything to share this morning? Um, uh, maybe one thing just to highlight is that, that there are some Illinois municipal bonds in the portfolio. Uh, I put them in for a specific reason. They're, uh, they're doing great. Uh, they mature in less than a year. So uh, they can just, in a wonkish way, it's a great uh, investment. So, uh, and they're general obligation bonds, so, um, yeah, I mean, clearly the state of Illinois would have to, like, vaporize them before they don't, they, they don't get paid. But my, my point in mentioning that is just, I just wanted to verbally say that just because, obviously, there's a lot going on in our state. But uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then I, does anyone have any questions? If not, I have a, maybe a personal note that I wanted to, Going through it, and 
As presented. I'll second. All right, thank you, Karen, and thank you, Brian. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Opposed, Houser? Aye. Park? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Flu? Aye. Postman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Aye. Right, motion carries. Okay, now we're going to move into our conversation or discussion that we're going to open up regarding the one to one technology implementation plan. And before we go to any motions, I just want to make sure we open up the floor and get any questions answered that any uh, board members may have. We've had a lot of good discussion here. We had a lot of good public participation this evening on both sides. Um, I think we, um, I sent out an email earlier in the day. Lisa put together a timeline for the discussion that we've been having on this initiative, which I don't have it in front of me, but I believe started back in, and uh, at least the timeline starts back in 2013 where we had discussion and we had Matt Jensen bring in technology um, plans. We had um, implementation conversations. Um, there's been a lot of discussion and Karen or Lisa, feel free to jump in. Heather's not with us. She's busy having a baby right now. So our curriculum director is not here to share all her work that she's done over the last um, year plus on this initiative. But um, it's basically just been a lot of conversation. A lot of moving parts, it's a big decision. We wanna make sure that we're making the right decision and we're making it right for the right reasons, which is for the students. Everything we do should always be for the students. So um, so I'll open it up and I know the board, you know, we've had a lot of conversation over the last few weeks, especially on this topic. So I don't know who would like to start. Can I just make oh, a statement okay, from sure. the administration? Would that be right? And I know there's been a lot of uh, conversations and we've had, um, the, the committee has, has done an outstanding job, and so um, on behalf of, of the board and the administration, I want to thank the, the one to one committee uh, once again for all your work throughout the last year. But, um, you know, in talking with Mrs. Bowman before she left today, um, our, our recommendation stands uh, from the administrative team. The one to one um, plan that she presented and that the committee presented um, last uh, month, our recommendation would be that. For that to be approved but we're open for any discussion that the board would like to have but um, from a just from a recommendation standpoint i just want to make sure that 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 was known okay and can you can you just um give us a just a brief summary of the current recommendation where it is well, if i had all that in front of me i would um let me pull that up sure no problem but um we would stick with the next year, would, there would be no funding. We would have the, um, our year will be focused on staff development, K-12, and that starts with uh, our August Institute. That has already been planned out. All of our district leadership team activities, all of our staff development, our school improvement days, um, everything will be focused on technology. Um, getting our teachers ready for the following year. and. Uh, without that, in talking with all the schools, because um, I went on a few visits uh, before Heather got here and then all the ones that the committee went on, that was the key to the success um, of any program is to have your teachers ready. And we can't expect them to do anything different with technology if we don't give them that background with the one-to-one -one, uh, training. So that would be the focus um, for this year. Also with district leadership team, we would invite um, a couple members of the board to serve on that team with us this year. The, usually we focus on three to four major things, but we will make one-to-one -one, uh, the implementation plan, the focus of that uh, going forward for this year. So that's what's um, in So who, who would year. be on that committee? Board members, community, parents? Or community, who would parents, there? students. Um, there will be an application process. We're gonna have a different um, way of doing district leadership team this year. We will have um, people. But be this would be apply. sorry to interrupt you. But no, this would be okay. a subcommittee of the district leadership. No, this would be the focus of district leadership. That's what it would do. Exactly. Yep. For the next twelve months. For the next twelve months. Yep. There will be a application process similar to what we did with the athletic leadership team um, to get a better variety of um, students, teachers, um, 
parents, community members uh, to be on that team. Then um, for 17, 18, we would have the Chromebooks for grades four through eight. And then we would have um, iPads, it looks like for K1. And um, teachers help me out here. Was there anything else for the following year? Yeah. All right, so 17, 18 school year would be four through eight. Yep. And I thought you said something else. That's it for the iPads too, right? Uh, the iPads are being moved, though. They're not new purchases. They're just being moved. Okay. And then I, iPads for K-1. Yes, but those are just iPads that are already in the district, right. and they'll be moved then down to K-1. Okay. Then for 18-19 is when you'd have your Chrome, all your Chromebooks would be for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. We would have um, Chromebook carts for the second and the third grade students. And you would have all your other devices would be rolled up. It looks like repurchased fourth grade. What do you guys mean by that? I wasn't. The ones that were initially purchased for fourth graders, so with the fourth graders, they moved them to fifth graders. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Eight, 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 Essentially what we would recommend the board do is that we come back every year and ask for your approval before we spend any money um, throughout the next few years as we roll this plan out. So again, what you would do tonight is to approve the plan, but before we spend any money in the following year, we would be back to ask for your approval again before we spend any money on devices. Okay. Because as you know, Karen alluded to, if we were to get into a budget situation a year from now, things we're not aware of, it would be a much bigger picture than whether we're doing one-to-one -one or not. There'd be a lot of decisions we would have to make, not just with one-to-one. -one. We would have to prioritize a lot of things. So a question that we had was why, and maybe Tom, maybe you know, but the high school um, teachers had necessarily bought into it as much as the middle school. Do you know what, what specifically that they, they weren't interested in? I think from a funding standpoint, if we did run into financial trouble, it would be better to have started at the high school, 
so that you know we wouldn't have to switch if that's the only place in a few years that we could afford to do it. It'd be better to have, I think, started it there uh, and then keep it. So I would prefer to start at the high school um, as well. But I mean, I'd love so you're to saying in that first year. Can I just ask a question? So on the presentation. Can you kind of describe like best practices, how much, uh, it's probably a tool in your toolbox for teaching from what I gather, so how much time, and you kind of alluded to this, how much time are you actually, is it 10% of the day, 15% of the day, do you see a best practices with this technology as it moves in the next couple of years? I'm just kind of going more to the younger kids in that, you know, the younger age where I think there's some apprehension out there as far as, you know, what's, uh, what are the standards going to be for a teacher? Are they going to use it a lot? Or, you know, is there going to be set standards for those younger kids so they're, you know, you don't have one teacher that's using it all day and you're not doing the other, you know, teaching stuff. So I'm just trying to get an, an idea where you see things at the younger levels, you know, uh, fitting in. Heather spoke to that. She just recently, when I was talking to her yesterday, you know, it's not all the time. Right. And that was kind of a concern I had too, because it's, it's a cost. But it's not all the time. It's not with every subject. It's with a lesson. And it would be maybe an enhancement to a lesson. Right. So, That's absolutely correct. So they're not always tied down. And then I guess then, then the question is, because I'm just going back and forth, then the question is, well, do we need one to one? Or is one to two okay? And can we have a library and they can reserve them? And I think that's a lot of what your one-to-one -one committee and your district leadership team can really focus on during this next year, knowing um, if this were to pass through the board, knowing they have the support of the board going forward, but how do we work out some of those details? You know, I, and I think um, until we know that this is the direction that, that the board, that we have their support to move forward, you don't really want to waste time as well if this isn't moving forward as far as with our teachers and that kind of thing to work on those kind of things but that would absolutely be things we would work on in the next year so those are and very I good points mention, i'm sorry to mean to interrupt oh, you're that right. internet safety they I mean, you, you kind of hit it it's kind of a balance but right. you know they maybe start teaching them at a, at a young age but there is you know talking to some parents from other schools so they said the walls that are set up are good in school they work in school but they don't work at home Matt, can you talk to that a second? Yeah, he or? talked about this at mm -hmm. last month's presentation. Well, let's go ahead and yeah. talk because three of us weren't. Yeah, can you talk about that again?
think that goes back to that report. I mean, most of that best practices, it's all about the implementation and the planning over the next 12 months. And I think that's why this leadership committee is so important to vet all that through, depending on where we go with this tonight. But it seems like uh, that's where all the effort needs to be in at the beginning is that's gotta be planned out. Obviously it's not everything that runs you know, without a hitch, but I think that's where we have to best our time is in the next 12 months if we go forward. And some of that's been laid out already, right? Some of that has. Yeah. Karen, can you talk to the finances just a, a second and just kind of clear up any questions that might be out there as far as how, how are you paying for this? How are you paying for it? It's a mix between um, current money that we already have that's allocated for technology. So we reallocate 17 allocated to computer labs that are, you know, we have to take the class to the new school. We would be allocating. Overall, isn't that? I think when I was looking at the numbers, it's less than one percent of our overall yes. ed fund ba balance, and then it drops off. It, it's below one percent. That two hundred fifty thousand is below one percent after the first year. Exactly, because after implementation, the only cost that we have, to, the only new cost that we have going forward, would be just the renewing of the devices, because the staff that needs to be added to support the teachers and to provide that support and to make sure that it's being implemented with fidelity, that staff, those costs will be there and they're year over year, but after you get through implementation and all that staff is in place, they're already there. They're not costing you more. You're not adding to staff every single year. It's just. And you did run some numbers, right? Mm -hmm. That your EAV fell to 1% or I should. Or yes. So we know for 16, 17 that our EAV
anybody can pull it off and do it well is our teachers. Karen, I have a quick question here. And, and it's for you, Angela, I know that you mentioned costs. Can you go through specifically what those costs are? Because I know that you, you said there was a 2.3 million upfront cost. I just wanna make sure that you understand exactly what these costs are. And then I'll answer, ask my next, next question after that, Karen. Yes, yeah, so when, when um, it's $2.1 million over the entire four year implementation. So in- And that's all K through 12. That's K through 12. That's for the entire implementation for adding the staff, and that's year over year. So like in 16, 17, there's no cost. If we're not spending any more money to do one, to get ready to roll out number one than we would, whether we were doing it or not. It's just a matter of where the focus is at. In 17, 18, the total is about, is about 714,000. That's 556,000 in devices, 32,500 in a tech support staff, and 125,000 in teachers support, in curriculum support. But we're already spending, the, aren't we spending how much per year now on the device stuff that would move on over? On the device, we're spending, we're spending $385,000. That would now. move over into that total. That will move into that, so yes. And then in the year two, it's about 678000 because the devices are a smaller, we're not buying as many from that second year. Which And then we're adding another tech person to continue to provide that support as well as an additional curriculum person provide the support to the teachers as we expand the system to make sure that the support's there to make it run smoothly. And then this is for K-12, and then in the um, 1920 year, it's about four, a little under $400,000 for the devices, and we would be at three tech people for just a little under 100000 for their salaries and um, $250,000 in teachers, which is, from, which is five teachers. So um, it's providing that support um, you know, our curriculum director is not here. I think her initial intention was to do fourth through eighth. I'm just throwing out there to react. Yeah, no, I, I agree so 100%. I, just, I, just, I think if we can agree to a, um, an age frame, if you know, elementary is um, uncomfortable for some, and we agree to six through 12, I think how that's implemented, that committee should work on. You know, like we shouldn't tie ourselves to the specifics. We just make the overall statement. So yeah, that, if, that if you would if you would go six through twelve would be in the first year you you, you would let the committee in the next twelve months decide what's the best role of either the the high school or the middle school, not both at the same time. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Exactly. And I think in budget so, wise, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it may the budget between six to eight and what they were planning for is much different than the high school too. So I don't want to get into the weeds, but I know that could be a potential issue too. So my, so my question would be, you know, for those that want to sit on that leadership committee, would that be something you would, you know, be in favor of that you're part of that process? somebody from the committee wants to speak as to why you chose four through eight, um, Andy or somebody raising their hand, Matt.
And the elementary, the pilot program in the elementary school. So um, thinking on that. So if in two, two or three years our EAV you know, tanks and the school funding formula changes and we get even less money from the state um, and we only can provide one-to-one -one devices, say three or four grade levels, do you think it's most important to have it at the high school? I mean, if you know, for the next 10 years that's all we can do? In my opinion, by then um, it will already have gone through you know, all of the grades. Therefore, I would say, maybe high school, it's, it's hard to say without seeing, you know, the process and how it's gonna work at each level. I mean, I guess my concern is you roll it out the middle school, then, you know, if you have a funding issue, then, you know, you'd have the program at the middle school with, all, you know, professional development for those people and we wouldn't have it at the high school, which is the closest to, you know, our, ending our time with us where students are going to either go into the job market or go to college where they're going to need these skills uh, more immediately. But by then, we're only financing the same we'd be financing with our traditional lab that, you know, our leases that we do over that. So it would not be that much more once we've already implemented um, the one-to-one, -one, it wouldn't be that much more to keep it going than what we have now. I mean, but in year two or three or four, we still have significant rollout costs then. I mean, what if we can't afford the rollout costs? I yeah, I think that's what Karen's saying. Where's more important to be? It's but I'm just saying, where do you pick put it first? You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, but I'm also taking the optimistic. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm always, I told Karen, I'm the worrier. Maybe I can, <laughs> maybe I can some answer that. Because I don't think this is the lowest priority program, right? Once we adapted it, this program should be pretty on the top. So if the bad time comes, I don't, I don't necessarily see that we put this program on the risk because, you know, like Lisa mentioned that we're going to go through another prioritization that that time what is the appropriate one to cut if we have to cut. Mm -hmm. But if we think that this program is the lowest priority that we're trying to implement, spending this much of time, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe that's the case. I don't know the, I mean, kind right. of the false point, you know, if once you adopt the K-12, uh, rollout, and you, if you were to get into a budget situation, I don't know that this would be the first thing to go. Mm. Um, what other, program, what other programs yeah. would you so have that would cost? But everything would be on the table. We, everything yeah. would be on the table. I, don't know what yeah. I, I felt like we were pretty mean, lean. It's the so, I mean, what else would there be? Yeah. Would it be? Uh, I mean, what, out of the Ed Fund, you don't have a I whole think lot. There's you can lots of things you can look at that we do that. You need to decide if are those your priorities or not. You know. Well, again, from all the data you show, I think I'm I'm a proponent of it, but I don't think the data shows, and maybe I'm gonna be wrong, Paul. That says, wow, you have this, your academic achievement just goes off the charts. It doesn't really show that. So, 
I think it's great to have, and I think it's important that we do it. I just don't know if it's going to have the impact that you're saying. I haven't seen any studies that show that yet. I'm sure this impact uh, is going to change. Other, otherwise, I don't, I don't know this uh, problem existing. Uh, many other schools is already adapted. It is hard to measure, I, I agree. But also, the I think the opportunity we're going to provide to the kids is some, some, something is probably unmeasurable, and maybe the true benefit they will get is actually probably five years after they graduate. Could be. It could be. I just, I'm just saying, I just don't know if you're going to have where it's such a big impact. You say, we can't get rid of this. I don't know if I've seen that, but it could be. But I'm, a, I'm on the side of, of implementing some type of this. I'm, I'm more looking at instead of spending money, and I'm sure we can afford it for this year, and then and I think this is the right time to implement the uh, teachers' supporting, and we have young teachers, so they can let the teachers do it better, probably. And then, but I'm more looking at if we not to do that, then how can you quantify that the opportunity we're going to do? That probably costs a lot more than $450. How can you quantify what was the question? Opportunity. Lost opportunity. opportunity. I think it's a lot Sorry. more than for 4,000 people. It's uh, bigger than $250,000 $250, per year. So do you feel like our students right now when they go to college, they're not prepared for the use of technology or, or when they go to the no, job market? So, so, <laughs> My oh. opinion, my opinion is I'm not, I'm not focusing on the technology. Oh, okay. Right? The technology, is, I think some teachers mentioned that this is a tool to bring I agree it's a tool. Probably more knowledge, more information, Hopefully, improving right? creativity, improving the critical thinking. I don't think this device is the learning how to use device is not. That's, that's not, not the primary. Goal. Okay. Yeah. So, Somebody so you think it is hand up back there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I know I'm not on the committee of the board. technical questions um, on the replacement policy there were a lot of concerns from parents about that and uh, just how it would be implemented have we benchmarked with other districts who self-insure you know I'm just a little bit concerned are there going to be disagreements all the time about well it wasn't my kids fault you know it was somebody else's uh, it was it was just the fault of the device how much administrative time do you have to spend do they have to spend the schools who've done this uh, negotiating that. From what I, what I've understood and what I've researched is there's two types of insurance. You would be for self-insured and then parents buy insurance policy or the school buys an insurance policy and sells back the policy to said parent. Okay. I, I've seen some questions about uh, rate of rate, you know, you know, why would the parent have to pay a loss if they're paying a fee? Uh, essentially what the districts are saying is if there's no penalty, then they'll break it as many times as they want. The kids are great, they need them every day. Just, uh, what, are, what are other districts' experiences who have self-insured? Do they have a lot of disputes where the kid and the parents say, no, my kid didn't break this? And well, I, mean, I know my, my IT department and I are pretty good at figuring out, you know, when we open a computer, who's still born and who's still so in it. So, I mean, a lot of the accidental damage is, is pretty easy to spot. Um, you know, we've had teachers that leave a pencil in their notebook and slam it shut and they break the screen. And they say, well, how about that? Thank you. 
they're only going to be liable if it's their fault, if it's just a... Absolutely. Okay. I mean, uh, if, if the machine fails, if, I, I mean, I guess uh, if my perspective is if, if a machine fails and it gets to its hand because the machine failed, then we'll gladly fix it. I mean, I, I can't, I can't uh, think how we can charge them if they hit a hard drive went on already and that Chromebook you've had for six months. We're going to go ahead and need a check by the end of the day, today, you know, to get you back and running. And just what if somebody refuses to pay? What happens if they don't sign the Google Docs authorization form? And did we have that happen during the pilot or say they don't? They refuse to pay for the device. What happens then with that student? We did have some uh, parents actually not want to sign off. We talked to most of them, most of them ended up signing off. However, a lot of the parents uh, were okay with Google Docs once they understood it more. You know, we defined each of the apps and what it did. Now there's another feature that we can turn on and say, okay, K-12, completely no email for a certain select student. But you don't have to have email to use Google Apps. You log in with an email address, but it's turned off. So if the parents are worried about that two-way communication with students or outside world, So if you did have a student, you know, parent refused, what, what happens, theoretically? I mean, my, my opinion is like bringing your book to school. Uh, I, I think it, I, I'm not sure what the punishment would be involved with our, our schools, but I think it'd be the same approach. Right. And I think that, that's, uh, to your point, I think those are all great questions. And I think that those are things that that committee over the next year can work through. I know Heather and the team have done a lot of that work, and they thought through some of that, mm -hmm. but I think some of those things are the things over the next year prior to the first year of implementation that we can work out and we can you know, talk to more schools and, and look at. I think those details will, will evolve over the next year of that committee working together. Okay. So. I have one more question for Matt. Sorry, didn't mean to no catch you off guard. Um, so, well maybe not even Matt, why, why Chromebook? You know, I hear that they're, you know, they, they are less expensive, but they also yeah. break easy. I'm not sure if that's exactly accurate. Okay. Chromebooks are less expensive. There are less movable parts. Um, generally, everything is in the Google App Cloud. I mean, it, it, the documents are not saved on the computer. I mean, they're actually saved in the cloud as they, as they function. So uh, what we found is we brought, I think, 10 devices to a demo day for the whole committee. And it was like, hey, this one's great. This one's awful. It's a little touch screen school. But I don't know if we really need that. And then we were going through the process. Our K-1 teachers really felt the iPad was the best solution. They don't need that keyboard yet, whereas the, the second through 12th grade uh, pilot teachers recognize that with state assessment, needing a full keyboard is much simpler, uh, typing papers, uh, you know, rather than, it doesn't, you know, the, the on-screen keyboard, like I just told you, take a path through your screen. You know, you don't have that issue when you're trying to type your term paper on a Chromebook. Um, I don't think they're cheap per se. They've made a lot of strides over the last few years. Ten years ago, I told you they were pieces of junk. But I know in the last few years, especially the model that we have today, it's very durable. Actually, you know, a majority of the school districts are using the same model. Not all of them have the touch screen, but they all have generally the same similar model that we have with pretty good rates of breakage. Um, you know, there's models that people mentioned that have 50% breakages. I mean, that's that's a huge number when you have, you know, 3,000 devices. So I can honestly say I think we fixed three Chromebooks out of the 900 we have currently, or 745, I think is the current number, in the last two years. And they've all been What's, what do we feel, again, just one more time, the urgency of, of doing this now um, as opposed to getting a little bit more uh, input maybe from parents um, and the community at large, looking at maybe the data a little bit better um, in terms of the effect of the Caterpillar economy. What, what's the urgency in, in doing it now as opposed to waiting an, another year um, to uh, begin? Well, I think really all we're looking for tonight is for the board to put their stamp of approval on, yes, you think K-12 devices are a good idea, 
and we're not spending any money. And so I think kind of to your point, Karen, we can spend the next year getting more input and getting more information and working on the details. But in the meantime, preparing our staff because that's the direction we want the, the district to head. If it isn't the direction that the board wants us to head, then administratively we need to regroup with our teachers and, and come back to you with some different recommendations because this district can either sit here stagnant or we can take a step in a direction and allow our students to compete with other students um, you know, in a way that they are not able to do that at this point. And so I, I think that's what we're looking for is uh, assurance from the board that yes, K-12 is what we want, now let's work out the details and bring that back. If that's not what the board wants, then we need to take that back to the committee and we need to redo our staff development starting with our August Institute. So, so we're not locking into four through eight right now? All we're looking for, all we're, and then when I say we, administratively, what we're looking for is the support of the board for the K-12 implementation and in the meantime, we can start our staff development and then we would come back to you in the spring next year and say, we're ready to, assuming that everything goes forward, we're ready to start uh, the implementation for the Chromebooks 4-8 and then the board would have to take a vote on that. And, but in the meantime, we can keep getting more data and bring that back to you. And if we get to that point, you know, and we've trained our teachers and, and the board says, uh, either financially or because of information the leadership team brings back, it's it's not what you want to do, then we need to regroup. So the grades are to be determined, really. Because I am really not, just what I've seen with the program, I mean, I've had four kids, they've all gone through, and I those those grades K through four, I told Heather, because she was so nice and she was so energetic, she convinced me to even go down into grade five, and I, I just can't see, knowing, you know, they need to learn to read and write and math. And that mental math is so important. Not that that's going to take it away, you know, these computers, because I think it does enhance, and then we just have to remember that it's still there. They are still in the elementary school, right at a one to two ratio, depending on where you are. So they can still be used, right? So, so I should see where. Yeah, I, I, I just want to start getting a pulse on where we are, because we're not here at 11 o'clock um, on the circle. <laughs> um, what I'm hearing you say, Beth, is that fifth grade is, is where you For start. Now, so you're not. I'm willing to go forward and take a look for another year and, and then rediscuss, you know, what we are the findings and, and going forward. You know, at So are you saying year. six through twelve? I am saying I'm willing to I want to hear what everyone else says. I'm well, willing to go forward and look at it for another year, implement it seventeen. Well, I'm just saying then but I'm saying if you said six I, through twelve and then the leadership committee would look at and make the recommendation next spring that, as to what grade levels to implement. I'm just throwing that out. That would be more money, would it not? Because we have grades four through money. eight, that's what, five, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if we do well, six, 12, that's two additional years. Right? I don't think, Brian, I don't think you're, you're not saying six to 12 at one time. He's no. just saying yeah. approval for no, no, I meant, grade six to 12. Instead of saying K-12 right away, six through 12, and then the leadership committee would make a recommendation as they do all the planning to where you would implement either middle school or high school. And I think at that time, during that time, there'd need to be a really good evaluation of, you know, financials simultaneously. Right, uh, I agree. Karen, are you, you're comfortable with this though going forward. I'm sure. I'm I'm sure. Make sure. I'm but we don't, okay. I mean, but we've all heard, sure. I mean, that, do, you have, do you have any apprehension, like, would there be any new data that you could get in the next year in terms of the impact of the caterpillar layoffs, I mean, not there, that we can't, not that we can't. And we hear more are coming. Right. Yeah, we all hear more are coming. If we get to that point and the caterpillar has has impacts, that's going to be the conversation that's going to happen with the board. Is can we still do this? Where are where do we put the money that we have? Uh -huh. Where you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's so. If those happen, we're not committed. To, there's no money committed until every year before, and by time the money's committed, the money is. Not the state who could tell us in three years down the road 
call you comfortable yep. if the case request? Yep. Brian? Um, I would be more comfortable with the 6 through 12. Have the leadership committee do the planning, come back to us with the measurables, um, and make a recommendation as to where to implement that either the first year. Um, as long as all that's in place, they would make the recommendation to either go forward in the high school or the middle school. And then we'll see where it goes from there, what the economy looks like. Maybe some more data is out there K through five, I don't know. Um, but I think it would be a good start. I would say K through 12, simply because we're gonna look at this throughout an entire year. I think we should look at the whole as we're doing it because to see if there's data, I would, I would choose K to 12. I'm, I'm personally comfortable just because Karen has done so much diligence financially and the fact that we're stopping every year and we're voting every single year on the budget and if there ever is a snag of EAD drops to 1%, then, then absolutely we're putting everything, we're putting everything on Ross. I mean, so it doesn't matter if you're here in fourth grade or you're here in eighth grade or high school, we would pause everything and of course protect the district. Um, so I'm in favor of K through 12. Sure. I agree. I, I think that there's consensus with looking this year from K to 12. And if fiscally it's more responsible to do six through 12, that's fine. I'm not sure what the incremental savings would really be. And when we're looking at less than 1% of the overall budget to begin with, it's not a complete wash with the technology fund that we have, but it's still less than 1%. Um, it sounds like there's huge success stories at the elementary level that offset you know, the initial concerns about screen time. I think, um, We've got the unanimous support of the building principals um, at the elementary level. Um, you have teachers that have stepped up you know, and took on the challenge of doing the pilot program who said initially that they were skeptical and pessimistic. They did a great job really rounding out the one-to-one -one presentation last month, really bringing that written presentation to life. And all of the concerns that I had, um, you addressed. And, and you came back again tonight which just shows your professionalism and, and passion um, for what this can do in the classroom. And then the curriculum director worked on it. You worked on it with the curriculum director. Before that started in 2013, you've got a leadership team with great expertise. You've got assistant superintendent, superintendent. You've got the regional superintendent. I mean, the decades upon decades of expertise and education and experience that, you know, that all of you have both in the district and then even Morton superintendent and Prince, Princeville, I find it really incredibly hard to impose my opinion about my concerns sitting on the board. Um, so I think it's great that we're taking it slow. We've already done the pilot. You guys developed that. Seems like it was a resounding success. Um, we've done a lot of you know studies. Maybe there isn't research out there that says that this improves test scores, but that's not what we're here all about. We want to enhance their education and develop them to their maximum ability. And, and that's our mission at Dunlap. So I think this is a step forward that um, is a real positive one. And I don't think the financial risk is there. And there are the safeguards there to, to put the stops on it. But I really think it's a positive program. You know, you guys have done a fantastic job. Sorry, that went a, a long time, but I was just waiting to hear everybody's input um, before I. So gave you're, my you're okay, K through 12. I am, okay. uh, given you know the, the year to study. Right, and every year we're stopping. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Karen. Yeah, I um I could maybe go along with what Brian said. Um, if it, it would depend on the wording. I, could, I wouldn't support a, uh, the way it's worded now, three-year rollout plan. Um, I would like it to be approved you know, each year um, with much more public comment, much more uh, analysis, uh, data. I'd like to see uh, some, I'd like to see the analysis that was maybe done earlier on what are the other ways you can spend this money and is it better for the students in terms of improving student performance. Um, so, you know, I have, I have some, so I would maybe go along with Brian's wording, um, depending on what it was. Okay. Well, the maybe is now. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, well, I'd have so, to, I mean, I'd just like to see it up on the right. board or, you know, type yeah. it out. Some, so I think this is what I, this is what I would propose. So 
Okay, um, I, I would say that uh, you know it's important that we have board consensus, right? This is a big effort, and I appreciate what you said, Paul, about you know it's time to move ahead. We're already behind, so I don't I don't think anybody wants to delay. So I think that's a good thing, right? I think well, we all feel it's important. No, I'd be for delay. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, I think the majority of the board doesn't want. Okay. 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 Well, right? I just want to people say there's one. And people feel we need to move okay. ahead, and so. Uh, as trying to work with the board for consensus over the last few weeks, right, there's been many phone calls, we've tried to compromise. The initial plan was for K-12 to read that way and to be implemented at fourth through eighth grade, moving into high school and then on K-4. through four. Um, Brian, you're comfortable with six to 12, and because we're stopping every year anyway, if it would bring board consensus for us to get an agreement tonight that everybody feels that this initiative for the one-to-one -one is important enough for us to approve as a board, going forward with, with grades six through 12, okay, which would give us a year of professional development, a year of committee work to um, uh, come up with any other, answer any other questions, and also determine what the implementation process will be with Heather and the, and the team, one-to-one the -one committee. And this would also give us the chance for that team to determine the implementation of those first two years within those grade groups, six through 12. Um, would, and know, then that leadership committee would also continue to evaluate the K through five. Yeah, because we'll let right. out. Right, we wouldn't have. And they, stop. you know, and it would just be a constant, yeah. you know, every they're looking at it all the time to see what's out there, and that would be an additional step. Right. I mean, that that's one way to look at it, uh, to go about it. I mean, you know, but because we would like to have board consensus, because that is important going forward, and we, you know, we want to make sure all the questions are answered, and it is important, and, and I do appreciate everybody's time and effort. But we, you know, we do need to move ahead. And it's important to the staff all the time that they've invested. And without the agreement to move forward, I mean, we, the professional development can't even take place in August. We I probably would, I don't know what we would do with our K-5 teachers starting in August if we did not know that we were gonna go forward with this. That would be a better question for Heather. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It would be hard for me to say to the staff, mm -hmm. I need you to do X, Y, and Z but I can't tell you a year from now you're gonna have support to move forward. I, I just, I don't feel like Well, I think the long-term plan is to head in that direction. Yeah. However, we don't know what the, the bottom could have felt in the county. There could be recession, there were sure. things. So, I mean, professionally they can get developed. We are heading in that path. We just don't know definitively that we can actually get there. I think that's a better question for Heather because she may have some other priorities that she would wanna to talk to the board with, that there might be some other things that K-5 would wanna work on that would be higher, I mean, that's, I think that's a whole other discussion if that's well, where we're at. But they so, yeah. still have iPads and they still have Chromebooks, so you still need to develop. Sure, but that's not a very limited. Teachers, you know, they, and if, if we're gonna roll it down, they need to. I think our professional development will have to go through very different next year. Yeah. Yeah. And you still have pilots. We do, and we would have to make a decision on what we're doing with that without having a whole bunch of commitment to it. Because okay. it's not equitable throughout the building. You know, and, and so yes, we do have iPads and we do have Chromebooks, but it's 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 very different in each building. So we would need to look look at that. But Hannah, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just saying. I one of the reasons when we were considering this plan to roll out um, that we started with fourth through eighth is because those students are already prepared because of the different ratios of Chromebooks that they're in the building. Within that presentation um, within May, there was a table that showed the ratio of Chromebooks to students in each building. And the lowest ratio is at all of the elementary schools. Um, the, whole question, the elementary schools are all about one to three already. Mm -hmm. Before I started this pilot, two years before it, I was already taking Chromebooks with my students. So you've been using them before this pilot even came into my purview. And that's kind of the reason we landed on starting with fourth grade, because these students have already been using them. They've already been purchasing books for them. And that's why we chose that as the ultimate rollout plan because the high schools, you look at their ratio, it's one to seven. Those students don't have access to Chromebooks at the elementary schools. So if you don't keep these students in the Chromebook system, then maybe you would never touch one the entire high school career yet. So that's kind of where we landed on that as far as the rollout. I see you know, technology is just like, just very similar to, you know, sports or art or I think that maybe the very critical time that, that they, they learn this, that they could be a higher input, you know, impact you know, on their, the rest of their, their life. So, and then I think, so if we do not do that case, how much we save? I think, 
think you answered the question before. We said 150. I don't think we're saying not to do not. I don't think we're anyone saying don't do K through five. Oh, it's just that your yeah. first phase is. I'm just yeah, saying your first phase initially are going to be the the either the middle school or the high school, and that's still that, that doesn't really hit. I know you're hitting fourth grade, but it doesn't hit till two, 19 and 20 anyway. Mm -hmm. So then the whole program is not really changed. It's just the way we start implementing that. Okay. So I mean, so I guess. But then eventually it came to the third then. Why, Absolutely. Is, why are you saying this right. is even? Well, because we're, we're trying to, I'm, I'm we're trying, trying to, trying to build, build consensus. Yeah. And we're trying right. to move this forward. And we're trying to be, right? So we're eventually we're both, so is that what you consent? I don't so know. So it is there. I don't, I don't yeah. know you know, if we could put up on the board, I mean, if everybody else is willing to go along with Brian's, I'd just like to see the wording. If we could put it up on the screen or something. But, okay, but if, I, I if, guess, the, if others aren't willing, then right. don't worry about it. Yeah, and yeah. I guess that the bigger issue to what Lisa was saying is that we need commitment K through 12. Even if we're uncomfortable at this point with the implementation, we still need commitment as a board to give the staff and administration the power to start to develop and move this initiative forward. And so I guess, and I know- and it's, But it's the professional you know, development that's gonna happen anyway. With, with this current plan, nothing, it would still be that the intention is to do the K through five so I'm, I guess I don't understand the question. Yeah, I mean, if they have Chromebooks already and they're using, and, they and they're going to still professionally develop. There. I don't think anybody's saying we're taking it out the table. It's just that it's implemented in 1920 anyway. The fourth grade is the difference, right? Well, you're also fourth reallocating your iPads to K1 and 17, 18. Um, but I'm talking about the professional development side of things. Right, but. What I'm saying is if we're not going to do this K-12, we wouldn't be reallocating. I didn't, but I didn't say that. I'm, right away, you're not going to implement K-12 anyway, right away. Right. right. But you get a professional develop. You have this opportunity to everybody do professional development in the next year, right? Everybody goes in. So I think that's kind of where we're at. We're right. just saying that it might be high school. It might be later on that that gets implemented, but I, I don't see well, where you're going with this. Yeah. Well, this, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I don't know if, uh, I, know you, I know you're concerned about the wording, right? And I think the, the initial um, intent is there. For the most majority of the board, K through 12 is the intent for this to roll completely through. Now, the timing is, I think, where, the, where there's the majority of the struggle is where you start and how it gets rolled out. So I think that those are the logistical things and we don't need to be down in the weeds really uh, getting into that, right? We need to approve the implementation of the one-to-one -one process. And if that's K through 12, I mean, if people want assurance that it's not gonna start kindergarten through fourth grade, maybe we can have the wording state that, you know, the board is approving the one-to-one -one initiative for K through 12 professional development with the initial rollout being grade six through 12. I mean, is that, I mean, can we, is it in the words? I mean, I, I don't know where the fear is really because I think we're all saying the same things. I mean, it, it, that committee is the one who's making the decision with all those great minds working together. I think I would give them the trust to say, you thought it out, you, you've done the due diligence, you tell us how you're gonna implement this procedure. We're just giving you the, you know, the authority to go ahead and do that. So I, I know we're struggling with words here. I just don't see how important they are at the end of the day if we're really going to support this and move forward. So, but it, but if it makes, if it builds consensus and it makes people feel better, we can word it such that it will be a K through 12 initiative. However, the professional development will start K through 12, moving on with the, the two, second two year phase, initial rollout being grade six through 12. I mean, it gets kind of crazy with the words, but it get, does that get people where they feel that they're comfortable? I, mean, I, I have a comment, and, and Shirley, you've made a great point. I was thinking the same thing. And Allie, maybe you can um, talk to this too. We have kids with greater needs coming into the district. We do at all times. And these success stories, and, and you know, I know because I had a child that had a disability as well, a lot of times these things help kids come out. And I know several teachers had said that as well, that these help students, it helps them write, it helps them do different things. So from my perspective, and maybe you can comment on that, Allie? Absolutely. I don't know.
regardless of what the wording is. And I had a parent. If you have, yeah. When they're available. How, yeah. how about this? How about approve six to twelve, and develop a comprehensive plan and proposal through K through five. That would be presented in the year two thousand. You could say two thousand and eighteen. That the leadership committee would do that. Does that? Well, what are we? What are you looking for? I guess that's different than what we have. As I, far as I think he's just trying to get. Yeah. Let's just go with it. Keep yeah, I mean, if it has K through five, you're not going to get me. So, right. but I'm saying in the comprehensive proposal in the plan that shows how that's going to be, how we could possibly do that and bring that to the board. I mean, I'd, I'd be okay with an analysis of it, but I wouldn't be okay with approving it. And oh I think no, okay, no, I'm just saying in a comprehensive plan and proposal to the board it doesn't say if they approve it. Oh, okay. Um, for K through five, as that committee, so leadership it would just committee be looks at an implementation of six through twelve. Um, that a, and then the committee would decide and what where what grades it would start and the details and do data analysis and do the plan for the K through five and do the plan for the K through. Five. But I think that's what our one to one committee's already done. I guess I mean I'm not trying but to be difficult, but I know, but I, you know. But I think we're dangerous. To, are we are we know enough to define the six to twelve is the right? first you know I, I, don't I don't know if there's enough data out there to do man to look at any of it but I mean as far as where you start first I don't right. think that is out there well and I, yeah, I, I don't think but there we do is know that that's not what the committee initially recommended I can tell you that committee out there knows a lot more and we than appreciate I do the committee's work by the way right I do too but I mean we're cautiously optimistic some of us and we're trying to trying right. to get we, we, this so through. are there is there six people that agree to the K through 12 just the initiative. So what's the difference if it if it said right. how Lisa wants it or if it said how Brian wants it? What's if it if everyone? I think it, they, they need the clear home. direction oh, so that they can. We're forward. looking for direction. Yes, yeah, exactly I think. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and the big thing about it is that in this this to me there's been significant compromise, right? And we work this and we work this and we work this. We try to bring everybody on board. I mean, honestly, and people, we bent over backwards trying to make everybody comfortable with you know with what's taking place. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we, we either, you know, you're given the direction, we're going to approve it or we're not, right? And, and, and I, I appreciate trying to build consensus and appreciate all your efforts, Brian, and I know there's been a lot of work that's taking place behind the scenes. Um, I just, I don't know, and I know we wanted to pause, and sure, we could pause and have a special meeting, I don't know, maybe in a week. I know some people are traveling, it's going to be tough to get everybody together We're in the middle of the summer, but I don't know what another week is going to gain us, quite honestly. I think Karen's done an excellent job of answering, you know, hundreds of questions. Heather. Heather's done an excellent job of answering hundreds of questions. You know, but I, I think I, we're so I think we're close, are we not? I, I mean it depends on how many others feel. You're saying you're never gonna go K five. I mean I would go with a plan to analyze and propose something for K five, but I wouldn't be for approval of K five. But with but, the intent to put this with their two hands. Yeah, Karen, go ahead. And I think what we I think where you have to be careful is our strategic But, but the thing is, if it's a if we are successful at either middle school implementing this and high school, we'd be foolish not to go that way. I'm just saying it just depends on how we roll it and how well we do with that. And I think mm -hmm. in this stuff in three years out or two years out, we're rolling it out there. I think that and you know if we do a good job, I don't think anybody's going to say they're already using it, right? But those would have to be and taken away and put to the school. Right. And I think that's what they're saying. Oh. Is 
We yeah. do just instead of if you look at it and you do the kids at a, the younger kids a little bit later in the implementation. Not to say that they're not going to get it, but Correct. just perhaps it's later towards All the, the growing pains to figure out how we're doing because everything is newly implemented. You know, I've been involved with lots of IT stuff and it's a it's a big undertaking. Right. And so you're okay with that. It's not saying we're not going to do something paid by. It's just let's make sure that we're doing what's the absolute best for the kids paid by. Right. And let's have, you know, and be able to show that. But I think you're, I, I think where the concern is, is, I don't know that Karen's ever going to be to basically pay by. Well, we have a year to work Oh, you will. You're, right. you're open to it. I mean, I would consider it at some point, yeah. uh, but it's not likely. I mean, and, and this, is the, this is the other thing. But if too, data is, comes out in a yeah, year's time that right. shows this is beneficial. Well, exactly. I mean, there, we, I guess yeah. there could be something that could change my mind. I mean, there well, could this, be. And this is my, my thing is that this, we're not, we're not, you're not deciding tonight, mm -hmm. right? You're going to have a chance every year to vote on this, right? So we're voting to go ahead with the, pro, with the process, but that's still pending, you know, financial forecast don't change. You can look at the data every year. I mean, you've got multiple years before that's even going to take place. And it's not as if you're not going to ever get a chance to say, hey, wait a minute, we're at the point of K through two, three, through third grade. I'm not convinced I'm going to be a no because you're going to vote every single year. Well, why can't we just vote for the first year? Well, because they need to have direction for so multiple that, years so to that start is rolling the, it out. That and is professional the development committee to it's it. It's vote for the framework to right. say we're going to roll right. out one-to-one -one technology, K-12, in some fashion because you can't roll, you can't do true professional development for all 12 grade levels if K-5 is never going to have one to one. It would be different professional development. Well, nobody's saying So that. that's not to say then. Saying. We're not saying that. And that's not what you're, and that's what I'm saying. Right. We're not saying that's, that's never going to happen in K-12. But we have K5. to give them a little bit of uh, yeah. a timeline. I can't say to the teachers because in August, Heather and I are going to stand up in front of the teachers and go through this with them one more time as to what the next year is going to look like. and. And I know our teachers are very hardworking and they're very supportive, but it's a lot of work and it's a lot of extra work. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be a lot of buy-in from them and it's gonna be hard for me to stand up there in August and say, this is what we're gonna do this year, but you may or may, we don't know when you're gonna get your devices. It may be four years, it may be three years, it may be next year. That's why we wanted to, to approve the rollout so that we could at least give them a timeline. Right. Well, yeah, and you got a three-year rollout. Right, right. seventeen eight. Right. So you you basically have three buckets of students. That we're talking about. So I'm trying to figure out, can we get that language? And Karen, yeah, can I, get you I on think board? you probably. I think you should just go ahead with your language and let me vote no. Because I don't think we're going to get there. I mean, I think well, we could just talk about it. from Karen and Brian. I don't. I don't think uh, your proposed way will not mitigate any risk because, because we're going to go through the same 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 voting process anyway. I'm I'm trying to build consensus. I know I appreciate yeah, it. That's I, I the mean, only purpose of it. I, I, I think the outcome will be the I think the same. And then after one year, get collecting more information and mm -hmm. analyzing. I think their proposal will be the same. Yeah. So, so I don't think this will go any, anything much. Very different. Right. So there's a possibility then on the year 1718 that that we all would come back or some of you would come back and say, okay, we're just going to do grades K through six or K through five. Can, you we see the writing? Can we see writing on this? Because I want to know what we're, I need to see what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, because I think if you on. say K through 12, the board, the leadership committee can then decide yeah. what you implement it on. Yeah. And I think right. that's the concern of someone. Well, but I mean, but they've already given us their, 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 their proposed implementation plan, and we've got a whole year where people are going to sit on that committee, and if they feel that there's a strong need to make adjustments, they're going to be sitting at that table, and so they'll have a voice. And so that's where you have to speak up. You have to speak up during the process, right? We can't wait two weeks before a vote and then we have you know, mass chaos. I mean, this has been taking place since 2013, I guess, and that's where some of the- Well, I know, but I mean, our curriculum chair is right here too. And so, absolutely. I mean, I, that's, I, I want to see her embrace the uh, It would be, I, I, I so. agree. I however, I however, however the process, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, but our curriculum chair, to me, seems very important that she should be behind us. Well, I'm completely in agreement with how Brian phrased it. Mm -hmm. so, so Beth, you were the curriculum chair, so. Yeah, I just said I would, you know, how Brian phrased it, I'm completely fine with that. I think that's, I just, I'm concerned about the, right now, the, the K. 
four, really, because I told Heather I could do five. But Karen's done it all. And that one, Brian, I don't know if he would go five. But if we want to do six, we need to, can we see this, please? Can we see what we're, where the language is so we can stay on track, kind of? I, I don't know where we're so at. Much everywhere, I have no idea where we're <laughs> at. Well, the, 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 I, the initial language was to prove the three-year rollout is presented in the May board education meetings starting in 2017-18. Um, if we want to make any adjustments to that, that, that's where we've been going around and around. And I, you know, I guess I'm just struggling with having four members who are more than ready to go and making adjustments that are still not going to bring us consensus. So if there's a way to make this work very soon, we can do that. But uh, other than that, I think we, we need to move on. Karen, do you have another version you want to share or no? Yeah. Okay. So the deal, you know, we really, you know, in the past we were pulled into this conversation way before even the presentation. And so that's why all these questions are coming up all of a sudden because, you know, we, we had the presentation, we had family surgery, I was sick, I couldn't come, and, and for two weeks, you know, so we started looking at this and then we started, you know, asking all these questions. So that's, that's where we are right now. Right, and I appreciate that, but we started informing the board, I believe, in, was it August of Informed but not engaged. Um, so I would, I am for what Brian, I'm all for what Brian said. I'm all for K-12, but I, I don't, I want to kind of roll it, I'm for kind of a backward rollout, six through, or 12 through six, and then we look at that and slowly move it. But that's what they're going to determine yeah, during exactly. this year time right. frame, what exactly. that rollout should be and come to us with a recommendation. Right. I just don't feel comfortable eliminating the K through five. But we don't want to eliminate and the that, and that's you you you're going to be on that committee so you'll be at that table you'll be attending every right. single meeting and so there's no way you're going to get left out of anything because you'll be you have a seat at that table yep. and so before anything comes back to the board for implementation you will have had a say in that so I, is, is approving k through 12 is not saying that okay we're approving kindergarten to start tomorrow that's saying that we're giving approval for this process to begin and all those grades are going to be considered right then the committee would, would go through that effort, and initially it was four through eight, and then high school, and then, so I mean, it's still right. years away. I don't see a difference in your, I mean, I, your, the way you worded it and the way you worded it, I, I, don't, I don't really understand the difference. Well, well it's not good, because if you're okay well, with that, then I think we'll go for Well, I mean, you probably better. need to just, yeah. what I think best, and I think if we can, I don't know how somebody needs to draft these motions, or somebody makes a motion, with some language and then we react. What is the to current it. motion? Can we? Well, I don't know what the current. Is, we know what the current motion. Right. Is. Maybe we can start there and tweak. Absolutely, it. and that, that's what that's all we want to do. And it's very vague, and so if people were okay with trusting that the committee can carry this forward. You probably need to change it, quite honestly. Let's see what that says. Uh, to approve the three-year rollout plan as presented, but now as presented would be the, what we saw in the May board meeting, fourth through eighth in high school, and so on. As presented at the May board uh, board of education meeting starting in 2017-18. The board will vote on this each year until 2019-20 school year begins. The Board of Education will reevaluate the financial outlook and prioritize what is best for the district each year. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than that. I mean, it, it, just, it just speaks to the process, but when it says as presented, then that's back to the four through eight, the high school. But all of that is gonna be tweaked, reevaluated, looked at, the committee's gonna work on the implementation. So that's where we can have some say, say or buy-in if there's any, you know, any uh, questions or confusion at that point because you've got a whole year before any of this goes out. So, I mean, I think it's pretty clean. If you want to move the presented as presented at the May board meeting and, and implement something there, you, you can. We can say as, as you know, as, um, as the committee, you know, works to, to implement or we can word it to where it's based back on the committee. What if, you, you what if the finances showed or, or something showed that you wanted to slow it down? So that saying it's a three-year rollout, why would you want to limit it to three, I mean, or constrain the language to be so specific? Yeah, I think that's like just the way it was, the way Heather planned, right? Oh, okay. It's a three-year rollout. That's year, to get, so, yeah, yeah, that's get it done. And I mean, if you want to just say the rollout, three years. if three okay. is hurting it, we can just say the rollout. Okay. I mean, that, I don't think that's yeah, going to make or break the, the, the you know, motion. So if we remove the three, if that helps anyone, and instead of saying as presented at the May board meeting, as presented by the, you know, the one-to-one -one initiative committee. Is that and you need to take out, approve the three, and then year. 
because otherwise it says the year rollout. Right. Yeah. So okay, year. So does that does that help the comfort level of? of so the, are you uh, taking out as motion. presented at the May board meeting? Yep. Okay. And what is it being replaced with, or is it not being replaced? Um, I think we can replace it with um, as something we want to we want to leave it to the committee. So you know it's, it's going to be you have as part of that team the people that put all the time in. We'll add a couple board members to it. And you don't want to have it come back to the board. Well, I think we need to. No, yeah, it'll come back. It's to the board. Oh, okay. It'll be so presented to the board with a recommendation. So how come K twelve wasn't even included in that if it was that important? Because it was as presented. As presented, it was K twelve. As presented was K twelve. Oh, okay, okay. With a recommendation. Okay. Um, so, so are we um, are we moving forward with looking at move to approve the rollout plan? I don't know if you're going to leave as so presented by the one to one roll, roll meeting out initiative. Plan. Are we recording this? No, we were. We were. The device of the rollout. But now when we say rollout plan, it can be, well, when we say rollout plan, it's going to be as the one to one initiative committee. Um, but I guess I'm, and we can do that, but I guess we're just concerned from an administrative standpoint what we tell the teachers in August. Do we just tell them that? I guess we're just, I guess maybe I'm just still a little confused. Maybe tell them we're doing top down instead of bottom up. I yeah. prefer not. But that's yeah. not even true. Because we need to meet. If you, 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 you try to change something, that's that's you're right on. Because yeah. we're creating this confusion. It's true, yeah. yeah. But the so why don't, we, why don't we just go with this? Yeah. And then leave the room by that you know, What's the recommendation? To amend that this recommendation, if there is a compelling reason, if they come up with a different data and then resort and then, then every year you can. I agree. Every year to having a detailed detail with the chicken and plan. I would I would suggest just yes. go for it otherwise you may create the yeah more more confusion and uh, lack of direction. Yeah. 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 Right. It would not successful as a start. Well and we 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 try not to have a um a consensus split too. I mean we're, we're we're trying to work towards consensus. Trying to work I mean, you know, and how many do we have that are willing to vote for it as is, I guess? Where are we at with the vote? As, as is, presented. As presented. As presented. The original so the original one. one. Put, okay. yeah. So undo yeah. that. Are we at? Four, three, five, two, six, one. Seven, the original proposal, you mean? Yeah. Going back to the original one? That was a five through, four through whatever. Four through yeah. eight. Uh, I'm a no on that. that. I'm a no on that. What, K through 12? K through 12. No, that, that, can be, that, that can be changed, right? That was the recommendation. To and then, forward. yeah, Janet, you're going to approve right here after today, right? Yeah. To, to the 2017 yeah. yeah. plan. So you have, you have an opportunity to change. Yeah. Yeah. From today. <laughs> They're going to take the year to review. I mean, we get caught up, we get caught up in the words and the language. It. I mean, I think they're saying this. The I same, think they're concerned with. And I, I don't know what the fear is because we're approving every single year. Is, I mean, so I, I just, that, that that would, I don't understand where is the fear. We definitely do give it, you know, part right, one as, as as three years, and we're never going to revisit. The original you're not going to understand. I mean, even the fourth grade will be back to talk about in the spring to make sure that's to get approval. But I mean, if that's the case, then you could just approve it one year at a time. I mean, if that yeah, were the but, case. But vision, vision, you for going forward, you can't really. I, well, I understand that. And so that's why I think they want that. That's why I think you all want it worded this way. But it, it is a vision. And so I wouldn't be for the for the vision of the plan. You know what I mean? The K through five. And I'm not going to, you know, right, be upset right. no, about it. I'm, I'm OK yeah. with, you know, I'm OK can, with you guys. We can approve guys. one year. Then I think the, because of the plan is assuming three years. So even if you approving the one the first year, the content that we're approving is kind of having the assumption that the second year, third year, and the fourth year, because I think they need to select the teacher to to uh, educate and, and where they selecting the teacher from, for example. Right? So if, even if you even if we do one year, I think that all the nuance behind it. Um, OK, 
Okay. I wish that I wish it were that easy. I just think that the um, the buy-in, yeah, you know, you can. Th there's fear that the buy-in may not be there, right? The Don, do we need to write it? And and maybe, um, uh, Lisa, you can confirm this. Do we need to write it as a three-year rollout, or can we make the motion to move forward with the one-on-one -on -one initiative, something like that, with a recommendation within the next year to the board for the initial phase? Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 moving Could you forward. just take out three years and just say rollout plan? Right. One it, to one. Because this is going to be in generation. And it may it's change like, is the thing. Right. Because right. You're, the rollout plan as presented right now is this. But, it, but as the committee evolves, yes. it may come back very differently. And again, we're going to look at the finances a year from now. Right. So we're still going to have the opportunity to vote on the Chromebooks or whatever in the spring. And so mm -hmm. really what we're, all we're really asking for is the board to say, Yes. Move forward. K-12 looks great. Move forward and send it back to the committee. Teachers, go get your staff development. Come back with another plan with the district leadership team and let's keep moving forward instead of stalling. Are you good with that? Okay. That's yeah, good with I, that? I think that would work. Okay. I think she's on kid. You're on board. Are you on board? Brian? Good yeah. Much. Okay. All right. So and we gotta reread that now because we've changed this like thirty times. But okay, we're gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna ask for a motion. We're gonna move forward to approve the one-to-one -one technology implementation plan. Now, that motion is gonna be, and I'm gonna ask somebody to to wait. Give us the well, I thought we were. Did you want to put it up? I thought we were doing this. Are we not doing this? Just take out the three years. Just taking out three years. Yeah, there's some three changes. Years. Right, there would be. Okay. Teresa suggested move to approve the one-to-one. -one to move to move forward with the one-on-one. -on -one. I think I don't know that we need the school years in here. I mean, 2017, 18. I don't know. Do we need that in there? Because during that time frame, during the next year, we are going to have the committee right to understand what we're going to do in the next year. You guys could come back to us, and we could say absolutely not, right? So it, it just depends. Because it's budgetary constraints, it's whatever it might be, right? 2016, right? Starting in the 2016. Is the planning. Right. Yeah. And the, the professional development. Yeah. The whole initiative really starts 16. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. What about the one-on-one initiative? Starting from Mark and Mark. Yeah. 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 Ye
There you go. And then the next yeah. one. Just good. Okay. Everybody okay with that? So I'm, I'm not going to be here. So it gives us the opportunity every year to go yeah. through the finances, which was important. I mean, mm -hmm. that was an important concern of everybody's, Correct. I think. All right, everybody's comfortable with that? Everybody's okay? It's up here. Thank you. I'm sorry, it's okay. it's a try. It's it's we did, we tried. No, I appreciate your time. It was very nice. Collective effort. <laughs> All right, um, I ask for a motion to approve the one-to-one -one technology implementation, implementation plan as seen on the screen. Someone can do that. I move to approve the one-to-one -one initiative starting in the 16-17 school year as presented at the June 15th, 2016 Board of Education meeting. The board will vote on this each year until the 20, that's what I'm gonna say, the 1920 school year has begun. The Board of Education will reevaluate the financial outlook and prioritize what is best for the district each year. I second. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Teresa. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Park. Aye. Reed. Aye. Dowie. Aye. Blue. Aye. Bozeman. Aye. Dishroom. No. Posthauser. Aye. All right. Motion carried. Thank you all. I know I know it was tough, and I'm sorry that you guys had to sit through all of that, but. It, it's really important that we, we, we did try to move, move on tonight. So appreciate everybody's effort and all your hard work and, and the thoughtful questions. And thank you to Karen and the whole team. Um, moving on now to our next item we had was, uh, were there any questions on the amended budget for the 2015 school year? I'm going to ask a motion to Which approve the amended. Is that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is that the one with just the little technical changes? Yes. Uh, Karen, okay, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, no, we I didn't have yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay, very good. Um, can we please have a motion to approve the amended budget for the 2015-16 school year? I move to approve the amended budget for the 2015-16 school year. Second. All right, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Cheryl. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Reed? Aye. Sowin? Aye. Blue? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Disher? Aye. Post officer? Aye. Park? Aye. Okay, this concludes the action item segment of the meeting and we'll now move into closed session. Can I please have a motion to adjourn the closed session? I move to adjourn to the closed session. Oh, for the following purposes stated in the open meeting, or included disciplinary cases to the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body, and three, the discussion of minutes of meetings lawfully closed. I second. All right, thank you, Beth, and thank you, Teresa. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Zawin? Aye. Blue? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Postalzer? Aye. Carr? Aye. Three? Aye. Aye. Presentation now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was giving a presentation. Right. <laughs> oh, no, she's just taking a nap. And there is people <laughs> freaking on the that this one. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, right. Okay, we've got a couple action items, everybody. You ready? Oh, I we need a motion to approve the Human Resources Consent Agenda for 2015-16. I move to approve the Human Resources Consent Agenda for the 15-16 school year as presented. Second. Oh. All right, thank you, Cheryl, and thank you, Paul. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Bozeman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Post Hauser? Aye. Park? Aye. Three? Aye. Salen? Aye. Blue? Aye. All right, we have a motion to approve the Human Resources Consent Agenda for 2016-17. I move to approve the Human Resources Consent Agenda for the 16-17 as presented. Second. Okay, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Karen. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Fisher? Aye. Posthauser? Aye. Park? Aye. Three? Aye. Salen? Aye. Bill? Aye. Postman? Aye. I ask a motion to approve the closed session minutes. I move to I approve move the closed session minutes of the regular board meeting of May 17, 2016. Second. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Karen. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Uh, Host Houser? Aye. Park? Aye. Three? Aye. Fallon? Aye. Blue? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Okay, motion carried. All right, uh, any requests for agenda items for future board meetings? 
Is that on already? Uh? It's on our, we have a list in the, I know it's on my list, but okay. it's not on a future. You just mean if the test has changed? If it, if, if it does. Yeah, so. yeah, that'd be fine. What about uh, any further developments on uh, pool concepts? I don't know. Is that something that when uh, do you think, think that we're was the to, We have a meeting in August. Okay. Yeah. What was your question, so, Brian? I didn't hear, sorry. Um, for future agenda items, was any um, potential pool alternatives? Mm. But we'll probably not, have something in September at the facility September. report, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I believe our meeting is in the end of August. And you know, one thing I want to add for future agenda items, I've been hearing from a lot of parents and with kids in sports that, and I talked to Brian about this briefly, kids in sports that are not um, IHSA sports particularly, like, um, and I guess lacrosse will be in a year or so, but lacrosse, you know, they did very well with the state championship, uh, that we have some, some way Last of- Last year they won. Yeah, okay, they recognizing did. those students. Yes. That's, right, if yeah. we have a student in our, in our uh, elementary school that was one of the top gymnasts, I mean, just because they're not school sports, they, we should have some recognition method for those students. Um, in wrestling, I know we had a lot of parents that are interested in meeting with Kreider about mm -hmm. doing a wrestling program, but a lot of them, they wrestle in a club wrestling team, and you know some of them are doing very well. So just so those students have some way of recognition, even if it's not a school-sponsored sport. Mm -hmm. So just to, to sure. think about it. Okay. Um, okay, so let me go back to the Madrigals. The what? Madrigals, that is not an IH, it is IHSA sponsored, but not in our district. This was brought up like four years ago, Don, when we first got on. Other districts, they do recognize it. I don't know why we would just leave her out. It's almost, I feel like we're on there. Awesome. What's that? They're yeah, awesome. very good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I don't do know. Do you know what happened on that before? I'm well, not familiar with that. The meeting that was, she came forward and had a bunch of people But she wanted a stipend. That was different. That was a stipend. I don't remember oh, the so IHSA. Yeah. Okay. So do we recognize them, IHSA? As do they get a stipend? Well, they should. So other districts that like they got a stipend. She doesn't get one. That's I, I can't remember all uh, the details. She but gets a stipend. She got a stipend in some in other areas. Yeah. And so there was talk about double, was it double doubling up or something. I can't remember the specifics, but. And they felt that so. And actually, that's probably a closed session. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So I just want to make sure whatever. I'll check on that. Department. Yeah, I'll she check on that. Everybody else should. Absolutely. She should. Okay, any but other items? I was going to say, I like that thing of the uh, athletics, and you get athletics and extracurricular, you bass. Yeah. I think the bass fishing. I don't, right. You know, you don't see anything with that. That's a club, but you know, that's becoming more and more popular. Sure. I think to recognize everything we can. I think it'll come out of that leadership athletic yeah. committee thing, right, so right. We, we try to hit on that. So it yeah, might for be participation. A, and actually, Greg and I were just website, talking about formalizing a recognition process, so this will fit right. Just so right. You, can rec you can look at it all. Right, yeah. a place for something. So you fish and fish. Yep. You know, things like that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Anybody That's else? Right. I have one thing I'm picking back up this valedictorian thing. I've had a couple parents ask me, and maybe this is just something that needs to go to Tom in the um, – uh, program. They do not denote anything for those that got straight A's but were not valedictorian. I don't know if that's something that would, should be brought up here, if that goes to the principal. I don't know, but several have, because we have several that do have straight A's, but there's the nothing that, notif that yeah. denotes that in the program. Right, if they didn't have enough of what the honors and AP we just classes. Move to waiting for and, and that is on our future agenda items, I think. What's that? that? Heather has. So I really wonder yeah. the conversation that was had two years ago and if it was just more someone driven uh, as opposed to the others that just the way they wanted it. I'll look into it. And that includes the middle school? Honors or not? Um, I don't know what they do at the middle school. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. You mean as far as just the straight A's? Uh, the, no, or the weighted, weighted grades? The weighted, you know, um, so that the people who get into Spanish. Heather's looking at okay. that, yep. Okay. Another option to consider too is putting high honors mm -hmm. and honors. Mm -hmm. They do that at the middle school, don't they? Yeah, but for high school. I mean, it's just a simple thing in the commencement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one asterisk for this, two yeah. asterisks for this. Yeah. I'll talk to them and find out. Easy. It's an easy one. Absolutely. Okay, anything else? Any other items to be addressed by the board?
It's uh, an hour behind when we usually like to finish, so we picked a good meeting. All right. So, oh, yes, sorry. you. Okay, can we please ask for Grace, anything you want to add? <laughs> anything you'd like to say? <laughs> thank you for being here. All right, motion to adjourn, please. I move to adjourn. Second. All right, thank you, Cheryl and Karen. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, meeting's adjourned. Hour and five minutes.